What's going on, guys? Welcome back to episode eight of the Wildcast podcast with me and your other co-host, Big Jiggly Panda. Say hello, Panda. Uh, oh, oh, fine. I don't. I don't <laughs> take orders from you. Oh. I'll say hi when I want to. Okay, when he's ready. But yeah, welcome. Hi, guys. Back. How are you doing? <laughs> Just start over. Welcome to episode eight of the Wildcast podcast, the greatest podcast the world has ever seen. Yeah, if it's seen, uh, I'm not no even other podcast. Yeah, I'm not even saying it's my unbiased opinion anymore. It's just that's just a fact. It's just a fact. Truth. You were joined- like number one in gaming on Spotify not too long ago. Yeah, I think so. Someone linked me something. I don't know. I believe it, dude. It was on the internet. Must be true. Someone tweeted it at me. Has to be true. They 100%. definitely didn't falsify that. Um, nope. But yeah, welcome. You were joined by your hosts once again, myself, aka Wildcat, aka Tyler, and me, aka Big Jiggly Panda, aka Anthony. AKA that fat guy that laughs a lot. Oh yeah. And if you're watching this on the video form here on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, you can just look up I am Wildcat or the Wildcast on YouTube, find all the episodes, or you can be listening to an audio only version on Spotify, SoundCloud, and Apple Podcasts, all of which are linked down below in the description. You guys have been sending me a lot of screenshots. You guys listening to them on Spotify, which is super cool, and SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. Uh, you can also just go on those platforms and look it up. Just search up the Wildcast if you don't feel like clicking the link down below in the description. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. We have a guest today. He is the master of moisture. The zero of penguin. Mm -hmm. He is one handsome son of a bitch, too. My God. Long, flowing hair. Yes, it's, uh, it's moist critical. Moist critical is the guest this episode. But before we get into him... <laughs> <laughs> Excuse him. me? <laughs> <laughs> But before we get into the king of moisture, we're going to have to talk about something else that's moist. Some sharks. Some surf sharks. With our sponsor today, Surfshark VPN. <laughs> Guys, surfing the web safely and securely is something that we all have to deal with on a daily basis. Whether it's you're trying to watch a TV show that's not available in the United States or whatever country you're in. Or if you're trying to watch a music video from your favorite artist from Korea because you're a K-pop stand, but it's region locks. Or if you're into some like really freaky stuff and you don't want people to even know that you've ever been there. Would it be nice if there was just one simple solution for all of these problems? If, if, if something could fix all of that for you at once. Well, lucky for you, there is. Surfshark turns you into an anonymous, hard to trace online user and makes the internet a safer and more enjoyable place for you. With the click of a button, you can forget the data mining and intrusive advertising when people are trying to, you know, you get Facebook ads for, you know, whatever the dildo was you were just looking at. You don't need people to know that. And then now they're advertising it for you on other sites. They know they're listening. Mark Zuckerberg hears your thoughts and reads your mind. With Surfshark, you can hide those thoughts from him. <laughs> Do you guys know what geo-blocking is? Well, if you don't, I'm gonna tell you. And if you do, I'm gonna tell you anyway. Sites like Disney+, Plus, Hulu, Netflix, all the streaming services have certain things in certain regions. And you know what? That shouldn't be allowed. If you've created a beautiful television series and you want people to see it, why should it only be available in places like Indonesia or the United States of America? Everybody should have access to it. Well, we'll surf shark you down! You just click on the region, you click on the television show and you watch it like nothing has ever changed. If you guys want to try out Surfshark VPN for yourself, you can click the link down below in the description or head over to surfshark.deals wildcast and use promo code wildcast to get 85% off plus three extra months for free. And Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you don't like it, you can just get rid of it. No risk and surf with your own set of rules on the internet. Once again, Surfshark VPN. You can click the link down below in the description or head on over to surfshark.deals slash wildcast and enter the promo code wildcast for 85% off or three extra months for free. Big thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this episode of the Wildcast. There we that go. Was Get a it solid started. <laughs> that. that was good. Are, are, you, are we sure? I know that was a pretty uh, weak one. I can definitely get something more boisterous. Yeah, let's for get you. something more boisterous. Let's go. Let's hear it. I get some pretty exotic burps going, man. Oh, yeah. His, his sound like the devil just being exercised from his body. <laughs> oh, shit. I, I'll have to get back to you on okay, that. Then right. I don't want to embarrass myself. Listen, when it, when it comes, you, know, you got to let it be free flowing. You can't force it. If it comes, just let it happen. Yeah, um, man. yeah to introduce you, this is our guest, Moist Critical, aka Charlie, aka Critical. AKA Penguins Zero on YouTube, Twitch. Uh, I've been a YouTuber since 2007. Is that correct? That's a long ass time. 
Yep, somewhere in that ballpark. 5.5 million subscribers. He posts a lot of like commentaries, reactions, reviews with the moist meter, stream highlights, video game content. Twice a day, is that true? You post two videos a day? It depends. I mean, often it'll be twice a day, but that's because a lot of it will be like a stream highlight than something that I made that day. So it's yeah. not like the most high effort shit where I've like hired a production studio to film some crazy shit or anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, over a hundred... You edit all your own stuff still? Oh, wait, go ahead. Sorry. What was that? Do you edit all your own stuff still? I edit the majority of it, yes. Some of the stream highlights uh, some friends of mine will help with. That's convenient. Uh, you stream daily on your Twitch channel, right? Moist Critical. Yep. Plug yeah. it, man. Do it. <laughs> I, we all right, we all know the plug. Do it. Yeah, right now this is just kind of like a Tinder profile right here. I like yeah, this. Yeah, Everything's just kidding. Give it a rundown. <laughs> People who don't know, because uh, we tend to, like, my audience is pretty, like, I've kind of noticed that they're pretty, like, focused on, like, my friends and, like, my group. And so I feel yeah. like this is good to, you know, make sure to introduce them to to people outside. But one of the reasons that I was so interested in talking to you, well, one, both Anthony and I have lo- have watched your videos for a long time, like since yeah. I started. So I started my channel in 2011. And I think back yeah. then is probably around the time I found like some of your videos, like Sumatori, uh, Facade, like some of those random goofy games. I was oh, like, never seen anything. Because back then, all, the only videos I watched were like Call of Duty. Like that was like gaming videos. And then you just came around playing like the weirdest shit I had ever seen. Oh yeah, I found a bunch of like these weird old demos. I had so many porn games that I played back then, but couldn't <laughs> post. Bro, At I, that point, I was just playing it recreationally because I liked porn games and filmed it. Have you looked through Steam lately? Steam has yeah. just a slew of porn games. Like if you go to like new releases, not popular new releases, new releases, every fifth game is some yeah. hentai game or some sex simulating game. Like it's some raunchy shit in there. Oh, like, it has- VR. Some are VR. Some of them, yeah. Some are like Candy Crush, except whenever you, you know, you get like four gems in a row or whatever, like some hentai girl like takes her panties off or something. Oh, Cherry Crusher. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Cherry Crusher, yeah. Another <laughs> really popular one is, uh, I don't know if you've seen this over there, Tyler, a lot of Hitler games are porn-centered on Steam for some reason. They keep bringing him in as a reoccurring hentai character. Is it just one developer that just, he yeah, loves two things know. in this world, hentai and Hitler? Like, holy shit. I couldn't tell you, but that guy's all over. If you didn't know Hitler, you'd think he was just some kind of like porn aficionado. <laughs> Bro, I would love to like make a video just going through all these games, but it just you can't do it these days. It's too video, many. Yeah, you well, one. There's too many. It'd be way too long of a video. But two, it's gonna get demonetized and then just like completely just shit on mm. in the algorithm. It might no just get taken down. Yeah, it might just get yeah. taken down. It's not advertiser friendly at all. Um. But yeah, another reason. So like I said, we've been watching your channel for a long time. We're both very familiar with you. Uh, the other reason, though, is just I really like your overall approach to like YouTube and uh, content creation in general. You kind of just kind of do your own thing. You do what you want. You kind of always have. Uh, that's something I've always like noticed and kind of admired. So I appreciate that, man. Yeah, I, I always like to do different things. I For monetization, it doesn't really bother me. Like I do a lot of sex toy things. And obviously, that's yeah, we, we check some of those out. The sex toy workouts. Oh, you, you got to integrate some of that. That'll put some real meat on those bones. I'll yeah, tell you. Yeah. You want 20 pounds of muscle quick? You got to get yourself some fleshlights. Two fleshlights. I got to admit, I was surprised to see the pliability of those things. I, I, I was, honestly couldn't believe it. That shit held You did the weight. rear delt flies? That was, yeah. That was a serious workout. That pull up, man. I still can't believe it didn't break. <laughs> oh, my God. If you guys haven't, if you probably have no idea what we're talking about unless you've seen the video, but Charlie actually did like a complete workout video. Sex toys. A couple flashlights, a couple dildos, a double-ended dildo, and one absolute monstrosity of a rubber cock. The Great yeah, American that... Challenge. <laughs> Is that what it's called? <laughs> yeah, that's its, we should, that's its we official title. We should get rid title. of Ninja Warrior and just have that. Oh, for how sure. Many, so how was, many dildo squats can you do? That was like, uh, was that like partnered with Adam and Eve, right? So we, yeah. We yeah, actually yeah. had them as a sponsor like one or two episodes ago, which is pretty funny. Oh, yeah. they're great. They're yeah. really, they're great to work with, like yeah. good guys over there. Yeah, no, they're good. Did you get a sweet hookup on all the like the flashlights? You said you ordered a lot of them. Hmm. Did you get any hookup on the price? Like they just like, give them to you for free? I'm trying to. Th- I know I have like 15. They're free. I just don't know what like that monetary <laughs> value would come, would come in at because <laughs> thousands 15, of dollars worth of he's got pocket a closet, pussies. That closet behind him is just full yep. of rubber butt cheeks and vaginas. Oh, you would be shocked at the things in that closet right there, <laughs> <laughs> hidden in plain sight. Oh my god. Yeah. 
So anyway, you, you, you started YouTube in 2007. How did you even, like, how did you get started? Because I saw your earliest videos were, like, montages of, like, Gears and, like, mm -hmm. Halo. Like, is that kind of the stuff that you watched and you were just like, I want to do this? Yeah, so I, I started before then. I made the Penguins Zero channel in 2007, but I actually had one in 2006 after seeing the RuneScape Falador Massacre video. And I started re-uploading, like, uh, videos from a site called that video site which was it was softcore porn but i would take <laughs> the ones that weren't and i would re-upload them on youtube because i thought well they're on this site they're not on youtube this could be my niche so i did that on a channel and then that eventually it got rid of that and then i made penguin zero to post unsigned rappers music so from like underground websites where they were posting their own music, I would take that and post it on my... So I basically just stole just everyone's content. You just stealing a bunch of shit. <laughs> yeah, I stole so much shit. I actually posted Soldier Boy's earliest, uh, earliest music before he was signed to a label. So like things like a report card I posted online. Like I had a ton of like rappers back then that I was posting on there without their permission, of course. That's the style of content creation that just never dies, dude. Just stealing other people's yeah. shit. Yeah. It's timeless. It's, it timeless. is truly timeless. So 2006, 2007, that's literally like a year after YouTube even came out. Like, yeah, I Like know, back man. then that's I was crazy. probably just watching like music videos or like fucking old Greg or that shoe, yeah. that shoes video. Like back, Ooh, that was when I was yeah. in like middle school. And I think that's the only kind of shit I really watched on YouTube. Stick figure stuff. I remember those videos. Stick figure death theater. Yeah. What's the uh, John, John LaJoy or whatever his name oh, is? John LaJoy. John, yeah. I thought it was John LaJoy. All of us had a different pronunciation of this dude's name. <laughs> was it not LaJoy? I thought it was just LaJoy. Well, he's like, it's like French Canadian name, right? So he's like LaJoy, I thought, but I don't know. It's, it's a lot. It's a J and then a lot, a lot of vowels. That's yeah. all I know. That was yeah. like my earliest memory of YouTube, I think, is watching his stuff. And then shoes, of course. That's a classic. The show me your genitals video, right? That's probably the one. Yep. E yep. equals MC vagina. <laughs> yeah, that's a classic right there. Yeah. So have you always uh you always played video games then? Like when did when did it become like the idea to like post video game content? That was from a man named Niz Mojo. He made a Gears of War montage. And that was I'd never seen a montage before, and I was like, wow, this is cool. There's music and he's getting headshots. I'm kind of good at this game. I'll try that. So then I bought a camcorder and I just set it up on a stepped stool in front of my TV and filmed <laughs> that for like a year. And then I got a Dazzle capture oh, card. Yeah. Woo! Game changer. Oh, yeah. I had the Roxio back in the day. That was my first one. Actually, I bought an easy cap and that was complete fucking waste. That was literally a disaster. I don't even think I ever got it to work. That was like the little piece. Of, one. The rock dude, it was the easy cap was like a, it was like a USB stick with three cables that were like RCA cables that you would plug in. And then it was, I don't even remember how it worked. It sucked ass. It was useless, so that, I wasted my money on that one. Then I got the the boom, check me out, Roxio game capture. I remember that one. That one worked yeah. out a little bit for a little while, and then I had to finally get the Hapog, Ooh, like the big the boys. Yeah. The Hapog was a big one. That was a game changer. That was a big step field. up. You had to crop out that little line. Was it in the top or in the right side or whatever? It was like it always recorded with a little bit of the frame like cut off, like a millimeter on yeah. the edges. I thought that was just because I was using like pirated Sony Vegas no, back then. That was just the Hapog. <laughs> no. oh, okay. Just always did that. Fair. Yeah. All right. Always I think recorded. I used my Hapog until I came back full time, like in the last couple of years. Really? Yeah, I didn't have an Elgato until much recently <laughs> I, remember, I remember like i remember the the ogata was like game changing in the black ops two days where you could do the just the flashback recording or whatever because we would play hours of black ops two and then we would just anytime something funny happened you just go back like a minute or two and then you get it that was the cleanest like way ever to like get clips and make videos it was so good i only recently got one too by the way man i got it uh <laughs> like two years ago well i mean by then you're probably playing pc games and stuff I, we didn't yeah. start playing a lot of pc till like well, we started doing like Gmod stuff in 2014, but in terms yeah. of like when I really only started playing PC it was like 2015, 16. Mm, that was when yeah. pretty much that's all I played. Um, yeah, I remember though very early on, I remember in a video of yours, like you didn't monetize your videos for like the longest time, right? Yeah, and then yeah. you finally did, but you were like donating the money to charity. Is that is that right? Yeah, I did that for like five years, but uh, I was very young at the time and I didn't do like proper research on a lot of the charities. So a lot, of, I'd say like the majority of them were just very scummy organizations and I felt like really? super betrayed. Yeah, so I stopped doing that, I think in like 2015-ish, 2016 maybe, somewhere in that ballpark. 
Yeah, I just remember that like super early on because you, you said like you just didn't, you know, you didn't want YouTube to like become a job. You just wanted to keep it right. a fun hobby. Um, and I always thought that was really cool because back then, like that's all everybody wanted to do is like they just want to get partnered, want to get that first YouTube check, have the YouTube money yeah. coming in. Yeah. So I'm so twelve dollars. So was it just that the charities like you found out they were scummy? Is that why it changed or did you kind of change your mindset? Because obviously now you, you do this thing full time. Yeah, so I still treat it like a hobby, obviously. I'm not yeah. out there like thinking like, all right, I got to grind. I have to get this out by this time or anything like that. The re- the only real reason I stopped is just because I really did feel betrayed. Like, hey, I donated all this money to these charities and I don't think it's helped a single person. So I was like, well, there's no point in doing that. I'll just keep it now. And now I'm starting to like donate it to people personally, people that I know will use it, will need it, will benefit from it and organizations that I do know do good things. So. Mm. Yeah. So it was just a matter of I should have done more research, but I was young and, you know, you always hear how great charity is. So I, I just mean, of it. all the mistakes someone young can make donating money to like the, not the best charity <laughs> ever is like it's, it's pretty low, it's pretty low on the yeah, list. It's pretty low on the list. Not too bad. But, but yeah, so you, that's awesome because I don't think anybody else has if they have done that, they haven't come forward and been as vocal about it as you were. You were very like, I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to make dick jokes over video games and whatever I make, it's just gone everybody else is like what tyler said is bring it on let me buy my mclaren or this house and <laughs> no, there's nothing know. wrong with that though i've never had a no. negative impression of someone that wants to make money doing it online like that is an actual dream job right there you get to make what you want to make you get to make your own hours and you get to be happy i think that's a great thing it's just for me personally i never wanted to treat it like a job which is what i was concerned about that it takes some of the, the magic mentality out. of it yeah so even still but, now, like you said, you're doing it, you know, you kind of still view it as just like a hobby, but are there yeah. things that you like, do you ever like force yourself to do anything or like feel like you need to do something or is it truly just, you're just enjoying it so much right now? Cause like, like you said, posting like almost two videos, streaming daily. The only thing that I'll sometimes force myself through is a shitty game for the sake of the moist meter. Like if the game blows ass, I'm like, <laughs> fuck, <laughs> yeah. I, I have to finish it though. I'm too deep. I gotta, I gotta see how it ends so I can give a proper rating. So save someone some time. Yeah. That's good. Where, what is that. the origination of moist with the with the moisture and oh, everything? Yeah, it's in your name, obviously now with on Twitch. Yeah, uh, so that started in college. I bought. I was one of the suckers that bought a Wii U, which is just an actual like scam. Like you buy just yeah, a piece of I didn't buy one worthless. Of <laughs> that sounds like it everyone has that Mario bought a Kart Wii U. at least. It had Mario Kart Eight, the only redeeming quality. Oh. Only good thing. I bought it because I thought it'd be fun for like in college with my roommates and stuff in the common room to just play Mario Kart and Smash Bros and whatever else might come out. And I couldn't think of like a name for the community uh, Wii U. So I just chose, I went with like dumb names like Commander Asshole and stuff like that. Just something simple. But you can't do that on Switch ob- or on Wii U, obviously. So then I just went with Big Moist. And I was like, oh, that's kind of a cool name. And then I just, I, I really like the word moist. So I just stuck with that for a little while. <laughs> That's really about it. How do these like ridiculous, like they just come to you just think of these or do you ever like, I just picture you like sitting on the toilet, just like pondering all the like commander <laughs> asshole and well, the t- big to be moist fair. and to, to be fair, commander <laughs> asshole is not the most no, clever. Not the most, creative I've gotten some creative ones. I actually wrote down one of my personal favorites that I have definitely stolen once. Uh, Tanya tickle titties. I don't remember what video this was from oh, way wow. back in the day though. <laughs> wow. That one really fucking just stuck with me, dude. I don't know. Tanya Tickle Titties was the, one of the most amazing things I'd ever heard at the time. Damn, I, I remember that name. I don't remember the game. I think it was, it was probably like Cat Mario or some shit back yeah, then. Yeah, I don't know. But that one, I was like, man, this guy, this guy's good. This guy's good. Tanya Tickle Titties. <laughs> it rolls off the tongue. That still yeah, sounds that's great. Like, you know, like that, that shit, I, I don't see how that just comes to you. No, you got to give some thought to that one. Well, yeah. I back then, <laughs> all I was thinking about was titties. I was a virgin until I was 19. I was like, tits, 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 tits. <laughs> How, Man, that's how, respect. I still think that way sometimes. It's been a while. It's in our nature. <laughs> this primal. So, so back in 2006, 2007, how old were you when you were making these first channels and, and stealing Soldier Boy's raps and whatnot? Eleven. I was really? eleven years old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eleven. Yeah, I started like, pirating oh, early. So wait, I've got, so I've got them now. So then you were only like fifteen in like some of those videos in 2011. Yeah, I started the commentary when I was fifteen. Did you ever, I don't, did you ever say that, that like, you ever talk about your age back then? Because I feel like, I just assumed Sometimes. you had, like, the deep voice still then. I just assumed you were, like, my age back then. I was only, like, 19 or 20, but. No, so, uh, 
when I first started, I was a lot more open about it. Like, I'd post on Game Facts, like, hey, I'm a 15 year old kid and I'm playing these games, which now sounds like an FBI trap for pedophiles. But I was like, hey, come, come check <laughs> come me be out. My friend. I'm, yeah, I'm 15 years old. Look at all these cool things I thought of. And then I also streamed on Justin TV. I was like, 15 year old kid plays <laughs> Call of Duty. But uh, over time, I was like, well, this is kind of scary because I was afraid of internet people back then and shit like that. I was like, eh, just keep that to myself. Yeah, yeah, I had no idea. I didn't I always, I, Same thing. It's it's the voice, especially before you started doing face cam when it was just mm -hmm. you talking over gameplay. I was like, this guy could be 14. He could be 45. I have no idea, <laughs> yeah. but I'm the, entertained. The theories were <laughs> always pretty wild. There was a popular one where it was like some biker gang guy with a cigarette. They're like, this is this is Charlie. This is the, this is the guy. This is critical out here. <laughs> I remember game. when you're like your face finally leaked and everybody was like, man. I want to fuck this guy. <laughs> <laughs> when was this? I don't remember. I was one of those people. I'm like, God, he's hot. It's the oh, voice, thanks, man. too. Oh, absolutely. I'll come to Florida and hit you up sometime. Hey, you, you got a place to stay. We can uh, exchange some saliva. That was <laughs> oh, back absolutely. in like 20... That was 2016, I think. Or, so so yeah. it actually it yeah. leaked? Or like, how did this happen? Uh, I was playing... I, don't, I think it was called Paint the Town Red, and I was talking about Snapchat. Now I just like put my Snapchat into a reply to someone's comment because I play like the recorder. I was learning how to play the recorder. I was like, hey, here it is. And then it just spread that way. Oh, From a recorder? Like a yeah. when it actually have a wind instrument. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> What a story. People learned my identity because I was playing the recorder. Yeah. He was learning Mozart I, on the recorder. Well, there were some, some good beautiful motor jams. Do you oh, have like yeah. a gang of pals that like all just hop on, you know, like once a month and just bang out some recorder tunes? I wish I was totally That'd alone lit, on that dude. front. Bro, yeah. I would love to go to a bar and like the band that comes in to play. Well, obviously not now, but the band that comes in to play live music, they just it's a recorder gang. That'd be pretty oh, lit. That'd be, One drummer well, and like four people on recorder. That'd still that'd be like a nightmare, though. I mean, they have like a <laughs> bass recorder that's like Ooh. this size. Like a baritone sax. They make or, any like electric okay. recorders? <laughs> Distortion. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Death metal recorder band. Some ideas going. Yeah, Early, like I heard your. What was the music video you put out recently? The newest oh, one was Skynut. Yeah. 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 That was sick. What was it again? Thanks, man. Skynut. Skynut. <laughs> yeah. That that one. That was like a year in the making from an actual professional animation studio. I, I wanted to tell the story of the Terminator, but if they were powered by semen instead of electricity, I was like, this is going to be cool. I'm going to hire it. Definitely is fucking cool. I'm on board for a full series, dude. Hopefully no, Netflix good. will pick it up. If not, you can definitely find some sort of Japanese animation company that'll be like, dude, the Terminator, but he's powered by nut. We're on board. Oh, we'll do it for free. Oh, they're all for that stuff. The Terminator. Ooh. See, look. The Terminator. <laughs> The Terminator. Man's hatching some bangers out here. I like that. <laughs> this could be the next porno you write. Yeah, there Terminator. it is. Terminator. Here to terminate some vagina. Let's move on. So, yeah, so were, were there any concerns, though, when, when, when the leak happened? Like, did it bother you? Or just, or was it at that point, it's just like the floodgates open, and you started doing face cam stuff? And No, I was I was totally fine. I, I, I did that expecting like, you know, people would know and I was like, well, maybe that'll be a good thing. I was going through a hard time at the point at that point. I was like, yeah, maybe this will be helpful. And then I didn't do face cams for like another year because at the time I was still just doing gaming stuff and I didn't feel like putting my face there really added much to the games. So then like a year later, I started branching out and doing more non gaming related things. And that's when I started doing the face cam stuff, which I think has really just been a lot better than just having static gameplay and talking. This yeah, I mean, it's definitely more interesting for, like, uh, just a general audience, I guess. Someone who doesn't already know who you are, doesn't care about video games, they just want to see you talk about yeah. some Karens or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what inspired you to mix it up from gaming? Was it boredom? Find a new opportunity? Uh, really, I just always wanted to keep changing things up, because it does get stale. Like, playing games constantly, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, that. that'll get stale, 100%. And I was like, well, let's do some more fun things. And I'll still play games because, you know, gaming's in my blood, you know, gaming barbarian. But I was like, let's make some other things. Let's find some other fun stuff to make and talk about and shit like that, which is why I just branched off. And especially playing like the old, like the same old bad indie games and shit. Like they just become so derivative and just so samey. It's just monotonous at a point. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the discussion Tyler and I were having a few days ago, which is, you know, it's we're very fortunate. We're glad to do what we do, but it's it has become work and work does become stale 
Yeah, so it's, that's always the sad part, which is why I always try to avoid something like that. Yeah, it yeah. just sucks when you're like playing the same game for months on end. You're like, this I don't want to play this, but I don't want to play anything else. And when like I was really having that like towards the beginning of this year and I was really thinking like this year I would do a lot of like like one thing I wanted to do is like travel to like either a different country or a different city or whatever with like one or two friends so, like with Anthony or someone else and bring just a camera guy along with me and just have him just film us as we just go and like explore just go try like crazy food go do whatever I don't know just different things that are like culturally normal there but different for us and mm -hmm. then then COVID happened and yeah, that is a rough time that'll, to make that New be, Year's resolution. Put, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that'll be put on hold. But I still think, like, when it comes time, like, in the future, once hopefully everything, you know, comes back to some semblance of normal, if I get burnt out on games, just be like, hit up a couple friends, like, hey, let's go to, like, fucking Japan and just see, like, what's up there, you know? Let's go to China and see what the hell they're doing over there. Just record yeah, some crazy great. shit. Yeah. But I think it is. For a lot of YouTubers too, I feel like that happens a lot because they feel like a slave to one type of content because of the audience. And I think that's sad too, to see that because the audience gets so trained to only see this one thing from that person that they only want to see that mm -hmm. one thing. So then the creator feels like they have to just keep playing or doing that. Yeah. Which is just rough. Luckily, we've, been, we've been pretty fortunate where like we've, we've bounced around different games and like we kind of generally get to play what we want to an extent. You know, you can't just mm -hmm. go play like, I don't fucking know if I went and played like civilization or some shit for like eight hours every video for like yeah <laughs> that would get old but for the most part like if it's a funny game that we're having fun with like most people want to check it out but yeah and i think that's very important so that way your audience knows like hey i'm here for these people not necessarily this game yeah make that right. distinction yeah now that's that's definitely like well, i'm sure you get asked because we get asked all the time like what is advice on doing this and making it a living and it's to try to not pigeonhole yourself into just one market as soon as you're i mean you can use it to grow obviously but don't be afraid to expand because it's like we i throw his name out there look at wings like old jordy jordan <laughs> like jordy he, jordan back oh, in the man. day he is stuck in 2012 and won't leave it and that was his downfall and it's that's just proof like boogie's sort of doing the same thing like respect to the guys they were one of the ogs but we have to be like what's that band one republic they don't sound like they did 10 years ago, but you got to fucking adapt to stay relevant, damn it. <laughs> now we're getting motivational. One Republic coming in. Damn. Stop and stare, baby. I feel like, though, for you, Charlie, I feel like you you don't like, do you have these kind of thoughts or like, because like you said, you kind of just kind of are kind of free spirited about this thing. Like, do you ever like just have moments where you're just kind of thinking like, man, I should probably change something up or like this isn't working or do you not really pay attention? You just kind of do what you do. Obviously, yeah, it's, it's you're just, very successful at the moment, like 100 million views a month, which is crazy, which is awesome. Congrats. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. For me personally, though, like, yeah, that that's not something I really think about. I know it happens, obviously, because I have friends that go through those things that you've just said. But for me, since I'm always just doing what I want to do in the moment or talking about shit that I want to talk about in the moment, I'm never like worried like, fuck, I have to do this or change this up soon or anything like that. So it's just a little bit different, but I definitely understand it. And I think your advice right there is extremely important. If you want to get started, don't like commit yourself to just one thing because eventually it's going to probably get kind of tired even for you to do that one thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're, you're regurgitated at that point. Yeah. You're yeah. going to get tired of doing it. People are going to get tired of watching it. Got to keep yeah. switching it up. I mean, so is that, so is that really like not a concern for you? Like what if, you know, tomorrow, whatever reason or the next month, your channel just starts really tanking for whatever reason dude people are just not vibing with the karen videos <laughs> and you know the moist meter and whatnot and you know you see well there's like a decline there's always like, only that concern you at all like would you still be doing this if you know you're you're, you're getting five thousand views a video or something instead of you know a million or five million yeah i think so I, one thing i've always done is i've always made the content i want to make so even if it yeah. goes out there and like five people watch it and like even my parents are like charlie that was a fucking stinker i was like that eh, was fun <laughs> it was fun to make you know if nothing else and that's always the most important part is making the things that i personally have had fun making and even if it doesn't go out there and do super well or anything it's not like a huge concern it's just not something that I really give too much thought to. Like, yeah, it would suck. It'd be like, you know, if I put a ton of work, like for Skynet, if I put Skynet out there and, you know, 10,000 people saw it and 9,000 didn't like it, I'd be like, well, I fucking love making it. And it kind of sucks that they didn't like yeah. it. But on the whole, it's not something I give too much thought to as long as I just had a good time making it. Yeah, that's the kind of mindset I try to have. I think you take it to like the next level, which is not a bad thing at all. 
but like I try to focus on like if I'm not having fun why would any you know if I'm not having fun making this type of video or playing this game like no one's gonna want to watch it and so like I remember like when Fortnite started getting popular like I started playing that game very early on before it blew up to the size that it was just because I was just having so much fun playing it and the type of videos like they kept releasing new stuff like every week and obviously it grew in popularity but like I was just having so much fun and I got a lot of shit for playing it because at the time like all my friends and stuff were still like playing like Gary's mod and kind of doing a lot of the same stuff we had been doing and I took this sharp turn and like really started playing just a ton of Fortnite so the people who didn't like it like gave me a lot of shit but I was just like I don't really care like I'm just having so much fun and in the long run worked out fine Did really yeah I think that's important too though yeah, yeah to make sure that you're making what you're having fun making and that's going to translate to the audience for sure true yeah Sorry to grill you so much about the YouTube thing. We were both like, because it's it's admirable. As someone who is also a content creator, it's more admirable than, than someone who probably doesn't and doesn't understand like what we've been discussing. Because anybody could be like, oh, I just want to do YouTube and do whatever I want and be fun and be successful. And it's not many people have successfully done that. Like you, PewDiePie, PewDiePie. I don't know how the fuck you say his name anymore. <laughs> like uh, Leon Lush is a great example. He's blown up now. Like just having fun and, and making... Uh, a successful career off of that is tough. It's yeah. admirable. I think, so, yeah, I just, again for killing it, dude. Thanks, man. I yeah. Again, that. we're not, we're not trying to grill you. It's just like, like you said, it's just very interesting. Cause like YouTube has become such a big thing now that like you have literal, like giant corporations coming in and making channels or like people that started yeah. off as just a solo person now have their own big corporations that they make, you know, multiple different channels. And it, it's become such a business that like, it's interesting to see someone having, a lot of success just still doing it the way people did 10 years ago obviously your content has changed and improved and stuff over the years but just in general it's just you just having fun making videos you enjoy doing which i think that's something to be said about how some people should approach making videos some people have forgotten that, that you know yeah i feel like at a certain point uh, a lot of people will see the most successful people on the platform are the ones doing x y and z so they'll start adopting x y and z which keeps translating you know cascading and everyone starts doing those things and it becomes the norm uh, there's nothing wrong with that uh, i think to a certain point that's a, even really a good thing because it gives everyone kind of an idea of where they should start if they want to try and do this thing and be like that person but uh, it's not I don't really know where I'm going with this other than it's super fucking different now. Yeah. Uh, very different. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little saturated. Yeah. Think, well, for sure. That's not what word. it was 10 years ago, especially in the gaming scene. Like back then it was what? A couple hundred machinima directors and then it was a couple small Ooh, fries. Were, and now it's like, they were all making call of duty videos. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. That's one of the reasons yeah. you stood out so much to me is like, I was like, what the fuck is this stupid sumo like block <laughs> game? This dude's playing. It was interesting. Um, all right, but I have I have a real important question here. How many of those white t-shirts do you own? Just curious, because they're in every video, and I think pretty much every stream, right? Yeah, pretty much, man. Uh, you just break out so, a whole new set of Hanes, like you know, once a week, or like what's what's, ooh, what's going whoa, on? Whoa. No, not Hanes. Oh shit, my bad. We don't we don't say Hanes in this household. Okay, okay, we're talking like okay. maybe Hanes premiums. These are Gildans. These are, oh, okay. these are nice <laughs> Walmart, yeah, yeah. Walmart quality. I think I have like. I, I recently threw away a lot of old crusty ones from like 10 years ago, but I think I still have like 70 or something in my closet. I took a, <laughs> I took a picture a while back and I was like, damn, it's kind of, kind of lackluster to compare to what it was. But yeah, I think I'm around like 70 right now. Is it just, just that's just white tees? Yeah. yeah is, that, is it just that that's just what you typically wear or is it specifically like that's just what you choose to wear for videos and stuff? No, fucking sadly enough, this is literally what I always wear throughout like all of college fucking high school even now as an adult i mean to be fair it's a pretty I, it's timeless look you can't you know the the white tee will never never not yeah, be popular it doesn't, it doesn't go it's out of fashion it's just not something many people want to wear to like actual things but for me it, i just still do it like a goddamn idiot i'll dress up though sometimes i do have i mean i you would be shocked at the amount of colors in that closet i have white <laughs> i have i have black <laughs> That's, that's really it. That's it. it. Dude, yeah. Maybe a couple grays. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's just white and black. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, I can't I wear a, white tees, man. I have titties. And when you get like the crescent moon under titty sweat marks, it just doesn't oh. look good on white tees, man. That's why you got to get some of those sex toys in your life. Start pumping that iron. <laughs> Turn those into <laughs> some pecs. Some of the mom comes downstairs and sees a pile of flashlights. 
swear it's not what you think. Oh, you're, you're, you're working sweaty. out again, huh? <laughs> you're all sweaty with a pile of just mangled <laughs> fleshlights all around. Yeah. So, I mean, aside from working out, have you actually, like, you know, properly given one of these fleshlights a good use? I've never used one. I'm just curious, you know, is no. it? No. Not even once, man. Not even once? How do you not even never. try it once? If I had one laying uh, around, I'd fuck it at least once. Gotta try it. I know. I, like, I just, I get so excited when I get one that I immediately start using it, like, in gross ways. That it's, like, immediately fucking destroyed, so I can't actually, like, <laughs> Like a dog punch. with a new toy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just ripping the heart out of it. <laughs> yeah. Basically. I was scrolling through your Twitter last night. I saw the one where you had affixed it to the sheath of a sword. And oh, I didn't was coming out of the vagina. That was a professional blacksmith from Forged in <laughs> Fire made that one. My Are flesh you serious? Light, my fleshlight cutlass. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Which cup which competitor? Because I know you like the Forged of Fire series. Yeah, it was a well, I don't I don't know if he wants his name associated with it, but oh, it was well, that's fine. Yeah, it was one of the contestants from I believe it was season four. Did he win his episode? No, I think he came. I think he got out in this second round, but I I don't think it was his fault. I think he just ran out of. Wait, well, so the sword yeah, actually was the guy's, like the actual sword. No, he crafted. No, he made. I I commissioned it. Oh, from that guy. <laughs> nice yeah. custom pussy sword. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. I feel God. like I feel like we need a moist a moist meter on the flashlight, like a proper. Review Good proper review, and you know, yeah. it doesn't you, have, you have the work. Yeah, well, you have the fitness applications, but we want to hear how yeah. how the, we want to hear how they feel. Uh, maybe <laughs> I'll, I'll have to wait for my next shipment of surprises, <laughs> and I'll try to resist the urge to just start like throwing it in the grass or something. Yeah, you gotta the, keep one on ice. In the meantime, mm -hmm. maybe we can get back in touch with Adam and Eve, and we can have our own sent over and give them a shot. Oh, you should. Uh, they are. You would be surprised, like just the kind of giddy joy you can have using sex toys in goofy ways. Like I'd break, I, I just break food with flashlights just because I like the sound it makes. I feel like a fucking, like an actual fucking idiot. Like they're just so goofy. Just fucking mushroom stamping a sandwich into some bitches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was Shit. looking at their site when he and I had the sponsorship, and they have a. I think it's thirty five hundred dollars life size. Fleshy a, sex a doll. A real sex doll. Wow. She has Holy the shit. soulless look in her eyes. She's probably about 5'2", you know, in great shape. God damn. But just clean asshole. Clean asshole. Full rubber, though. And it's disturbing. But I definitely think I would prefer that one over some of the other options they had for their fuckable <laughs> sex dolls. Some of the faces. I don't know how anybody could ever fuck that and see that face and not just... Looks like something I'm conjuring. Up. Yeah, just shrivel up in shame. <laughs> one guy reviewed one of them. It was like a $60 blow-up doll. And he said, used a ton of lube. Still ripped my penis. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe avoid that one. I actually, I think I know which one that is. That's in my closet. I didn't, I didn't blow her up though. I'd, br I'd bring her out if, if I wasn't. It looks like a pool to... float with a pussy. Yeah, it's, there's one. I have two. The one I have in there is actually like jagged edges. It feels like they made it out of razor blades down the spine. It's weird. That's probably the one he reviewed. I don't know how yeah. anybody can go through the trouble of looking it up, putting it in the cart, filling out shipping information, payment information, waiting several days for it to arrive, getting it out, <laughs> inflating it. Then once it's inflated, still see that jagged ass fucking stabby vagina and still go through with it. But, you know, braver men out there than I, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he spent he his heroes. money. He's waited his time. Gotta fuck it at least once. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. All right. Well, you know what? Moving on. <laughs> so I, I have a question. <laughs> we'll be back on sex toys soon. It's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, it always it's circles we're coming, back we're at full some circle. point. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you, you've got some, some nice, long, luscious locks there. I've noticed. Did you have you all have you like grown your hair out before? Do you like do you just decide to or it just happen? Because I kind of did the same thing like a year ago. I would just randomly for the first time ever in my life, I went like a year and a half without getting a haircut. You look like Charles Manson. Yours is much. <laughs> yours is that's got to be two years in the making, right? At least, right? Close uh, to it. It's about. It's coming up on it. Uh, so I I've never grown my hair out. I've always kept it pretty short, except seventh grade. I had like a bowl cut, but other than that, everybody, it's always everybody been, did at that point. Yeah. yeah. It's always been short for me though, and then uh, last year, around Christmas time, uh, so this is 2018 Christmas, 
Uh, I just, I went like two months without cutting it. And in videos, people were like, holy fuck, Charlie, get your fucking haircut. And I was like, what is this? I don't, you're not my mom. I'm not getting a haircut. <laughs> yeah, fuck that's kind of how I was. My dad would get pissed every time he saw me. I'm like, fuck you, dad. You're bald, all right? I'm going to keep this shit going. <laughs> like, you're just jealous. Yeah, spite. You grow yeah. it out of spite. And that's uh, that's where mine's really come from. It's just genuinely out of spite. I was you, like, I don't want to cut it. And you're not going to tell me to cut it. I'm going to let it grow. You probably like were it. in that range. Though. There's like a there's like a, a threshold where like you're too long to look good as short hair, but too short mm -hmm. to be good as long hair. There is like a good couple months in there where people are just like, you need to fucking cut that thing. But if you push through it, tell all those people to fuck off, then it starts to flow. And yeah, you get some real good volume to it. Like mine's kind of long right now, but I, I've had it cut and trimmed. But I was getting I was getting yeah. to where you were. If I wouldn't have cut it, I would be right alongside you right now. You should you should have, man. It's a it's a misstep. It got I love so it annoying. Now. It got so annoying. It would like you have to wear a hat every time you eat, don't you? Yeah. 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 Well, or, I put it, or, I put it behind my ears. See, yeah, maybe yeah. that's I don't know. It wouldn't stay behind my ears. The shit in the front would fall in front. I couldn't I couldn't mm. get myself to put it in like a ponytail or a or a man bun or anything. I just couldn't do it. Don't know why. I do the man bun quite a bit, but that's nothing kind of wrong a with it. I just, I just couldn't do yeah. it. I think because my girlfriend would like make fun of me. I just couldn't. I don't know. I couldn't do it. <laughs> but she likes it long. But yeah, I don't know. It just got too annoying, and it's too fucking hot here. How do you do that shit in Florida? Because I don't in, go outside. Because I'm in Tennessee. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. See, I'm in Tennessee. I step outside with that hair, and I'm just like suffocating. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. No, I, de I definitely get it. It is a hassle. Like a shower, it takes so long to dry long hair. I hate that. You, you like, use it a takes a dryer? long time. No, I tried that and I hated it. Fucking terrible. Why? I I, I didn't mind it. I kind of liked it. Kind of looked. It felt good. I guess once you hair dry it though, you get a lot of tangles. You have to like brush that shit. Yeah. 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 I didn't really like the hair dryer. Has at no all, idea what we're talking about. Sorry, Anthony. Throwing it around. I have a hairline like Vegeta, man. I can't. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> there. Look at this. <laughs> oh baby, hey, that looks. Well, that is exactly like Vegeta. <laughs> I am a saint. <laughs> wow. Warrior. Call me Prince Vegeta. <laughs> it's kind of like right. a like a viking style a little bit yeah i could do like the uh the center yeah like the the side fade and just do like the the viking mohawk look mm -hmm. that would work is your hair like pretty thick i think that was the other thing i have like real thick hair so like it, i've literally felt weight on my hair when i would like move i think my my girlfriend says it's like more thick hair but for me personally i don't think it's like super thick or anything but when I put it behind my ears, it'll sometimes fall out, but not yeah, all see, the time. See, mine wouldn't so. do that. I think it's because it was like so thick. Like I, I couldn't push it back there because it would just be a clump that would eventually mm. just like that and the humidity here would just poof it out. Yeah, I get you. Couldn't do it. So then I, I got a haircut like a couple months ago. I said, give me the Paul Rudd. That's what I was going for. I think oh. he pulled it off pretty good, but then it only sticks around for like a month, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going for. But well, how is, uh, how is Florida with, uh, all the COVID <laughs> idiots oh, running it's, around. It's an actual fucking wasteland here, bro. Yeah, it how is terrible. How many cases <laughs> they're at? Now. It is terrible. It is terrible. The, Florida gets more daily cases than some countries have had in total. It is nuts. It's fucking wild here. No, everyone is so brain dead. Just like actual Half a million sun cases for just in Florida. Ugh. God, that's, that even sounds low to me, just looking around. <laughs> like, actual fucking sunburnt ghouls in this state. <laughs> like, can't even read and only know meth. It's horrible. Yeah, I, I lived in Florida for six years. I do not miss it. Oh, yeah, the be uh, someone said this yesterday. The best part of Florida is leaving it. I, <laughs> I definitely get it. I get it. Surprised you haven't. Down to, like, Texas or something. I just lived here my whole life, and I've I've liked Florida up until all this COVID shit. Now I see how dumb everyone here is, and I get why everyone hates Florida. I totally understand. I'm only like the melting pot of the dumbest people from this country. They all yeah. migrate there and retire to just spew shit. Yeah, I've only yeah, ever like gone park. for vacation, so I don't I don't think I've ever really gotten the true full like Florida experience. Been Miami a couple yeah, times. Miami was nice. Miami was good, but I only kind of stayed, I guess, like in the downtown, like kind of nicer areas because I was just there for like a day or two doing like work stuff. But mm. At Atlantic Coast is fun for people our age. I was on the Gulf Coast, which is fun for people three times our age. Where they go to die? <laughs> God's waiting room. That sounds about right. Yeah. Gulf Coast that's, of Florida is America's hospice. That is actually what they call it. God's waiting room right there. Yep. That's the yep. one. It's, uh, it's good stuff. Everything closes at 6 p.m. 
Yep. <laughs> it's not very good. It's it's pretty bad here, even before COVID, I suppose. I just kind of turned a blind eye to it. <laughs> I, just, I just fucking hate everything here now. I look around, I'm like, you know, fuck the heat. Do I even like hot weather? I don't know. Fuck Florida anyway. <laughs> it's pretty. It is pretty. The beaches are nice. Yeah, I want to go back to a... I don't know. I don't know. Where, where, where's the best places to go in Florida for the beach then? Because Gulf Coast is where I was always thinking, but if they're, if they're all old smelly people, I don't know if I want to go there. Miami was oh, nice the one time I went. has the best beaches. Yeah. Like but the Tampa the kind of area. That's, yeah, that's where I'm at. Yeah. St. Pete, Clearwater, Sarasota. All those beaches yep. are nice. But there's just nothing to fucking do. Yeah. Except die. <laughs> Well, now in more more ways than just being old. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have a lot of options. COVID, get ran over by a geriatric, get red fever or for red tide or whatever it's called. You can fuck a manatee and get crushed. Pick a choice. <laughs> I don't know how it's, how is Tennessee doing? Tennessee, I think, still doing okay, maybe. It's not great. It's getting worse. This shit well, is, it's all getting worse. It's all getting worse, yeah. But Tennessee was pretty good there for a little while. I'm like in the Nashville area. It was pretty good mm-hmm. for a little while, but Nashville's I hear is a really cool place. Uh, mm, <laughs> it's okay. <No. laughs> Downtown Nashville, like you have Broadway, like which is like the main street. It's just a strip of bars. It's just all like country bars, mm-hmm. and I mean they actually like they all have live music, which is super cool. So if you like country music, there's a lot of good shit. But they also have sometimes like people that'll play like rock and stuff, and then they have some rooftops that'll that'll be more like club like, and those are pretty cool. And it's cool to experience like once or twice, but for the most part, it's the only reason I ever like to go downtown is just to people watch because in the summer you have nonstop, um, like what is it? Bachelorette parties. You have multiple Ooh, nice. bachelorette parties. It's the number one bachelorette party location in the country is Nashville. I'll come on down and visit. Come on down. We'll, we'll wingman you <laughs> up down here, dude. I just kind of warn you though. These, <laughs> these bitches are crazy. I don't know. I can't even tell you how many times I've seen them get carried downstairs, vomit in the street, fall over into their own vomit. Just, like, just being, yeah, sounds, just being the sounds like paradise. Yeah, the worst, most annoying drunk women you've ever experienced. And they have like, they have like these buses with like male strippers on them that come down. They call them the hunk buses and shit. And the girls just, oh my god, they just like get on them. They have these pedal bikes where all these drunk girls can pedal around to annoy everybody within a one mile radius. Oh, they have those at like, Comic Con and stuff. Yeah, so in the summer you have tons of those and then you have a lot of like the girls that come from like all around and they, they like pretend they're like rural, rural like country chicks but they like you know all they, they own like a pair of cowboy boots but they you know they're like an accountant or whatever and they come down and just they just like seem to go over the top trying to prove like how country they are <laughs> you know it's like super annoying. Yeah. That sounds kind of but awful and cool. It's cool and awful but there are a lot of like you know, we got some sports. Hockey's cool here. Got a lot of nice food. It's really good barbecue. Nashville hot chicken is dope. So that kind of stuff is cool. Downtown Broadway is just a shit show. You got to experience it once, but I don't know anybody that generally goes there to like have a great time. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, I, I guess I just Tampa don't know much about it. Anywhere like that to go. Ebor? Tampa, well, actually, back in, uh, back in ye old college days, Tampa had really, I'm sure they're extinct because of COVID now. But they had a area called Soho, which was kind of like that on a much smaller scale. It was a bunch of strips of bars, college bars where like USF, UT and some other university nearby would all go every like Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. So they had all kinds of deals and it was it was a lot of fun. That's about like the only lively place in Tampa, though, which was the Soho area, which is in downtown Tampa. Fucking lived there. That was great. I've been on UT's that. campus. That's a nice little school. Yeah, that's where I went to college. I liked it. Took pictures there when I was like 15 because I thought I was artsy and shit. Did you take it at the uh, Henry Plant Center on the steps? Uh, it was like, there's like this, there's these like four, they look like fingers coming out of the ground. There's like four of them. They had a curl at the top. They look like some sort of weird catheter inserting device. <laughs> but they, it's like a statue on the campus. <laughs> it's yeah. a wonderful artsy. Nature's there. catheter. I don't remember. I'd have to dig through like an old photo bucket account to find those photos. Yeah, I don't know if that's still there. They might have got too many complaints then. I don't think I was there when I was there. Too many people sitting on the giant statues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I lived in uh, Sarasota for like six years, so I spent some mm. time in Tampa, but I spent most time inside like you do. It's hot. Yeah. 
I keep I keep mentioning all these uh, these guys how I want like four or five of us to like split a beach house down there and then just go <laughs> every year from like January and February. Just have a beach house, just a bunch of boys just hanging. Yeah. Cause, that kind of shit was always cool. Yeah, just like those months like YouTube wise are always like the worst. There's like no games coming out, like ad revenue shit. You just like went super hard like trying to like do as much as you can in like November and December while all the holidays and stuff are going on. It's like January, February, we should just go chill on the beach. I want to do it. We should do it at some point. That's a good area for it. Yeah. I just like it because it's like a 10 hour drive for me and I can take my dogs because I don't want to have to like put them up anywhere and I don't want to fly with them. I've heard bad things about like flying with your dogs. I've heard it like yeah, heard sometimes you don't get things. the dog back. I've yeah. heard you you get the dog back, but it doesn't it just doesn't behave like your dog anymore. Like it just fucks them up mentally. I can imagine that fuck me up if they put me in the bottom of a plane for six hours. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I've only heard bad things. So I'm like, I'm never never gonna do that. So I want to be able to drive wherever it is. But... I hate flying in general, so I'm always thinking about driving distance. Do you fly like often, or have you flown? Well, have you ever flown? Yeah, I've, I think I've flown ten times in total. I've hated it every single time. I just why like just it. anxiety, like just yeah, just that thought. Like if something goes wrong, that's totally the end. That's that's a game over right <laughs> <Yeah>. there. We, <laughs> I don't use. What a fucking book. awesome way to go, though. Yeah, I remember Charlie. He died in a plane crash like a rock star. Yeah, but then you <laughs> cut to Charlie, and it's like this terrifying moment of like a nosedive and pissing <laughs> my pants, like, shitting. <laughs> yeah, it's awful. Yeah, I don't know. I've always, like, I was super nervous about it the first, like, several times I did because I'm, like, I'm afraid of heights, and I think that's, like, one of the most terrifying things I can think of is, like, a fucking plane crash. Then, obviously, you think, like, it's very unlikely. Pretty much never happens, especially here. There's thousands of flights every day. That doesn't really reassure you, though, because you're like, all it takes is just one thing going wrong. That's exactly what well, I, I say. Know, I don't know what yeah. it is, dude. I think it's just I, I take a drama mean because I get motion sickness anyway. I pop that shit, which will, like, have me super drowsy within, like, 30 minutes. And then maybe I have a drink and I'm just chilling there, dude. And about an hour in, I'm passed out, relaxed. And I, I don't know. I just recall like being an hour and a half into a flight one time and just being like, dude, if this thing crashes, like, we've had, had a good fucking ride, dude. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, it'll be quick. Like, I'm not worried about it now. I don't know. The drama I've me, been dude, on flights where I wanted to go down. Man. Yeah. I've been on multiple flights where I wanted to go down. Yeah, you've like, had some. Jesus. You've had some rough flying experiences. I've never had any that like crazy bad delays or. Terrible cancellations well, and getting fucked over all the time. Every other trip for me is like that. Either I get stuck next to the person on the on the plane who's 650 pounds and bought one seat, or gets delayed for six hours and I'm sitting on the tarmac waiting. I'm glad that's never, never happened. I would go like fucking that. nuts. I hate sitting on the plane when it's not moving because it just oh, it yeah. just starts to get hot and sweaty yeah. <laughs> and like stinky. It's like get me the fuck off this thing. Well, I understand oh. that. Flying's not, yeah. you know, I don't know. I find it relaxing now, now that I've done it enough. I just like, all right, a nice couple hours where I can't do anything, but just sit here, chill, listen to some music or a podcast or whatever. But, but yeah. I can get that. That's what everyone says, too. It's just, I don't know. I feel like I'll always fucking hate flying. I've done it. I think the most recent time I did it was like four years ago, and I hated it then, too. I think another just, thing is, know. since I've done it so much, like, I don't know why, but it, <laughs> it's kind of fucked up but it kind of makes me like giggle sometimes when some people are like super stressed out like you get some like turbulence I remember this one girl was sitting next to me she was just fucking she was not having it dude it was like the most mild turbulence ever just a few like bumps and you could just, she was like clenching at her legs and shit and I was like it's gonna be alright like I don't know the fact that that shit doesn't bother me now and now I'm like oh fucking this thing could just do barrel roll right now I'd be chilling <laughs> <laughs> am I liven things up a little bit <laughs> yeah might get that kid in the back to stop screaming. Yeah. But all right, well, you know what? Oh. To circle back to to sex toys, as we said, it always does. Kind of. Uh, I hear you and some friends are, are writing a porno. Correct. You made a video yeah. a few months back. I saw, and uh, you know how how is that coming along? I I know there's probably been some delays with everything going on, but yeah, so that's a that's a really on the back burner because, as I'm sure you all know, the porn industry cannot happen you know, efficiently right now with the COVID stuff. So we wrote this script and it's a beautiful script. It's a, if you take out all the porn of our porn script, it would still be a great show. It's, <laughs> That's good. It's it, it's four episodes. We finished the script for the first one, submitted it. They liked it. They really enjoyed it, but they can't shoot it because then COVID happened. So it's still on hold until all that gets taken care of. So hopefully it still gets made. 
I imagine they're losing a lot of money right now because they can't make new shit. So I guess we'll see. They were planning on it being like a six-figure production for the porn. So they were really like banking they're, on this being like a go, good show. They're gonna go literally balls to the wall. Yeah. yeah. So and I, they they put their faith in the right people. This script <laughs> is a fucking masterpiece. Yeah. So, so, so to Phil Anthony, and if he doesn't know, and anybody else listening, you got approached by like a big like a big well-known like porn company, mm-hmm. correct? I'm assuming you can't mm-hmm. say, or or maybe you're just choosing not to. But no, um, not right now. Yeah, and they, of all people, they're like, we need this guy to write our porn. Like, how does that happen? To, to be fair, the initial offer was to do uh, sex toy stuff because they also sell sex toys. Or they they, they, have a <laughs> they stumbled upon the sex toy samurai yeah. on like YouTube. <laughs> 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 yeah, I guess. And then they're just like, hey, "Do you want to play with our sex toys?" And I was like, "Well, I like, can't was it really literally just like out of the blue?" Yeah, they sent it to just my personal email, and they're like, "Hey, we like this. Do you want to play with some of our shit?" And I was like, "Well, well you, you know me and sex toys, but I wouldn't want to betray old Adam and Eve over there." And she, they were like, "Well, that's fine. Do you want to write a porno?" And I was like, "Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah." <laughs> so well, was, yeah, of course I do. So, what was that process like? Like, is there any like? Is literally just you and some friends just fucking mm-hmm. knocking out a text pad? Just yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's a it's a very professional script. We we went all in. Like, we got one of our guys like writes scripts. Like, he's very familiar with oh, the really? process. Yeah. So we wanted to be like super professional, airtight. The hard part was coming up with how characters have sex. We don't like <laughs> direct them. In the script, but we had to come up with scenarios where they would have sex because we ended up just making like an actual four episode show with no sex. And like, well, what the fuck? There's no, <laughs> there's no porn in our porno. Watching, just like they've got their dick in their hand just the whole time. It's yeah. like, what the fuck? <laughs> this shit sucks. Yeah. The suspense is what gets them off. Yeah, yeah at the Am very I end, ever gonna kiss. see a titty. Yeah, we just get one kiss at the end. Well, I definitely, but, uh, I definitely want to see this when this becomes a thing. I mean, are you gonna like tw- tweet it out or like promote it oh, anyway? Fuck like, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how they're doing it. I'm hoping it'll be free, but I imagine with like a six figure production, it'll probably be like a pay X amount for the four episodes or something. I don't really know. Listen, I'm all, this is I'm assuming- all for the pay per view. Let's do it. I'll invite. Are some you gonna give it a voice to review? <laughs> do a Twitch watch party of it. Like, <laughs> fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hope I'm hoping it still gets made. Uh, I'm just a little worried with the Corona stuff because I already know that it's on the back burner and I know that they're struggling right now financially because all this shit everyone is. Yeah, so I'm actually like me and some of my friends are working on like an animated series at the moment. Like we're making a pilot, nice. um, which is something it's been like years in the making. We're super excited about it. And like we were worried with like all the COVID stuff happening. But like animation is the one thing that like can very easily keep going with everything going on because mm-hmm. everyone, you know, like animators can work from home. We can do our, uh, you know, we like did our writing meetings and stuff like online obviously recorded our lines ourselves because we all have like good microphones and everything um so like we've been pretty fortunate there but i mean so what what, i mean what's the issue i guess with like the porn shoot is just how many people on set or like can there's no way for them to like test everyone and like limit the amount of people or i think it's just an actual like in their state where they're located i think they genuinely cannot just gather the necessary amount of people to film because it it is a huge like production like i said they wanted to do it six <laughs> just, figures so just they have had someone like a building away fly a drone in <laughs> film this shit with drones dude that would be the, the, that'd be incredible that you should uh, i don't try know. To reconcile your relationship with riley and uh see if you <gasps> star help push I, the numbers that'd be that'd be one hell of a way of burying that hatchet man yeah <laughs> bad hey, blood riley, i know we've got some bad blood but I actually have a gig for you. <laughs> yeah, check out this role. Like, come on, look at this. This will put you on the map. You'll be in the next James Bond movie with this role. <laughs> the only Bond girl to get DP'd on set. Yeah. <laughs> the, that's, the, that's the, the watch party idea is pretty funny, but it makes me think, like, how long until we start seeing, like, reaction content on, like, porn? <laughs> like, I, I just picture, like, some dude just, like, watching and reacting to porn and just, like, giving commentary the whole time. I think I would watch that at the beginning. I want to monetize do- that. Why not? Yeah, I thought that would be something fun a while back. I had this idea where you'd make like just a standard review of like movies or games or something, but it'd be porn. So you'd give your review while having sex. So that way you're getting the best of both worlds. <laughs> I think there's a lot of potential. There's, yeah, no, that'd be pretty. So wait, you're reviewing like you're reviewing a regular movie or game. Yeah, but it's while mm-hmm. you are having sex. Yes. Yeah. 
So you'd be like reviewing the new Paper Mario Origami King, but you're also like, you know, going nuts to butts there in the the actual action. That's interesting. I mean, these are all untapped markets at this point. This is all yeah. good stuff. I mean, for people listening out there who feel like, you know, there's no original ideas out there. You just got to think, think outside the box. This is your chance too. I, I'm not going to yeah, make that. We're none one of us, you guys none of us are there, doing it. I mean, I might maybe in like five, 10 years if I'm real desperate, but <laughs> you got at least five, 10 year head start. <laughs> Get that meat primed, boys. Yeah. Let's see. I had. All right, Charlie. Random thing here. You know how uh, you know how Hot Ones does the explain this or explain that grammar, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I went through your Twitter and I found some tweets, and I want to know if you can remember what was going through your brain. Oh God, am I getting canceled you... right now? <laughs> when you no, no, they're fairly recent. They're recent. <laughs> Nothing. When you type this shit out. So let's go with uh, let's go with this one here. The thing I respect most about meth addicts is how fast they can run while naked. My mm. balls flop around way too much. If I ran nude, my scrotum would look like a tangled Xbox controller wire. It's very descriptive, well, I, but I mean, what did you witness well, a meth addict running naked? Uh, I saw a video. This was after <laughs> I watched a very popular video. I'm sure you guys have seen it. This was huge. It was uh, this guy driving around late at night, and they were filming a guy that was on a bender. And he was uh, naked, and then he started charging the car, and they started speeding away, and he was keeping up with the car, totally butt ass naked, dick flopping around and shit. I don't and his think eyes I've were seen red. This, but I, need I have to. not seen you this. Haven't? No. No. Oh, you, you guys need to see that. His eyes were red. Yeah, well, because, because of the, the camera. Lens, but it just that's gotta yeah. be scary. Like it was naked fucking meth awesome. Demon. Yeah, naked meth. Demon. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was so cool, and I was like, wow, that's impressive. And I've been trying to do more cardio myself, but like I'm getting. I'm getting to be an older man, so my nuts hang a little lower than I've ever had them hang before. So when I run around and it's not contained, it's just like slapping back and forth and like actually winding me. It hurts. Dude, so when I, I go down the stairs, it sounds like someone playing a pair of bongos. <laughs> it, is, it is like a grandfather clock pendulum hitting the inside meat of my thighs. Just... It's terrible, that's, right? Anthony's, it's the worst. Anthony's 30s. That's what, that's what we've got to look forward to. Me in just a couple years. Is that My grandfather was a Vietnam veteran, and he told me he stopped wearing underwear after the war to air out, like, jungle rot and stuff. He told me this when I was 12, keep in mind. <laughs> he said that gravity had affected his scrotum so much that while he was getting head, he could lay it over the person's eyeballs. No, oh, what the And fuck? I was 12. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I could tie that shit in a knot. Damn. Holy well, shit. Liz, I wear He's gone now, but... Well, Rest ho in peace, hopefully the boxer, you know, I wear boxer briefs, so hopefully that's enough support to keep him from slapping my knees here soon. I don't want to yeah, trip over them. Humid climates or... don't help. They, it's like those fleshlights after a couple pull-ups. <laughs> they really start to stretch out. <laughs> oh, they do. Oh, they really fucking do. If anyone in the audience hasn't hit like 21 yet, you don't know the kind of nightmare you're looking forward to. T run on the treadmill all you can to get the most out of your, <laughs> your nut sack now. Just do it in it's downhill. Always work out in cold, you know, cold controlled environments, mm. you know, a meat locker or yeah. something. So that shit is shriveled up real tight. No chance yeah. of getting in the way. <laughs> looking like a monkey brain. <laughs> yeah. The right, I got another one here for you, Charlie. What the fuck? The chupacabra is real. It just fucked my grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. This is, <laughs> this is January that of 2019. You don't remember this tweet? That was, that was, are we sure that was me? <laughs> Maybe, oh, yeah. Was, I don't know. <laughs> I'm positive. Uh, I don't think that was a retweet. That was straight from uh, from uh, almost two years ago now. Wow, yeah. No, I, I I don't know what was going through my head. I was probably just thinking about the chupacabra and <laughs> thinking about old old Grandpa White over there. And <laughs> it connected the dots, I guess. All right. Well, I think I know what inspired this one, but still, I want to hear your thoughts. If celebrities really cared about making quarantine better for people, they'd drop a picture of their asshole. Mm. No more shitty singing. Just show us your chocolate starfish. Yeah, that one's pretty self-explanatory. Is that directed I'll... towards Gal Gadot? The whole lot of... Every celebrity. I'm calling every celebrity out. Everyone watching this right now, every celebrity, you're just a big selfish prick. Show us your fucking butthole. It's not that hard. <laughs> We don't need these dumb fucking inspirational singing choirs and all that garbage. It, it that would be, I mean, stuff. everybody would definitely, like, be more inclined to stay inside, you know, yeah. stay on their computer. If they knew that at any point in time on their Twitter feed, a nice anus would pop up from someone, That's what that, from I'm someone they saying. love to watch in film or music or... Yeah. I have an idea. What if celebrities were to just 
draw eyeballs on their spread cheeks and then sing songs with their <laughs> opening and shutting ass. That's like some greasy strangler shit right there. <laughs> Just fucking ADR that shit in post. Just have them singing over a butthole clinching. Yeah, what, what did they sing? Imagine? I can yeah, only... like John Lennon. Yeah, that'd be a great encore. <laughs> Gotta, I only collected three. I, I only wanted to pick your brain a little to make bit. That one happen. Mm-hmm. I think he has the connection for that. Yeah, I'll do my best. Put in a good word, for sure. All right. So we've mentioned Karens a ton. I watched the S tier or the the tier list, but I have to know, and I'm sure people are curious because I don't think you stated. Do you have a standout favorite from the yeah. S tier? Also, there've been yeah, some absolutely. since the tier list, so maybe some of them have topped. You know. What was yeah, we got list? Pizza Karen from the other day. That was a good one. She was good. She was good. I, I don't think she'll be beaten just because she's so consistent. And I, I know you guys have seen her work before, even outside of the tier list, because she's been very popular. She's the Walmart one. Yeah. The lady, the motherfuckers <laughs> one. The accuser she's of done, the brethren. The accuser of the brethren. Yep. yep. <laughs> she's done that in Walmart you three times. the accuser. <laughs> she's so good. That's... She's so good. Are they different Walmarts? Like, they can't let her back in. No, I think it's the same Walmart. I really do. I mean, there's I'm like, pretty sure. I mean, there's like eight Walmarts to every small city at this point. She can find her way to True. another one, or hell, if she has to, she'll go to fancier Target. You know, <laughs> she's not gonna make a scene like that at Target, though. They're very uptight. She's gonna make it through the doors at Target. No, they screen people actually before they go in. She did it to a uh, garbage man as well, though. So if she has to, she Wait, won't even do it in the business. Video? Yeah, like she, I, she's done this three times that I know. Of. <laughs> oh, I did not know this. I need to see all these videos. Yeah. There was two, and I think I think there's even three in Walmart, but I know for for a fact there was two in Walmart, and she did one to a garbage man. <laughs> yeah, I want to see the garbage man one. How, yeah, I'll, I'll have to find that. Is it the same guy too. just like filming this fucking woman? Like she, he, he, he like recorded the first <laughs> insane encounter, and he's like, dude, I know this woman's schedule. I'm just gonna find her when I know she's out and about. Like, <laughs> yeah, and just see what milk she's up that. to. Yeah. That'd be smart. Just follow around like this ultimate Karen kind of shit, like some kind Dude, of little that film should crew be a, for That it. should be a, a channel, just like Karen Hunters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Karen Camera. Can't be that hard. It's right like candid camera. Yeah, Karen Camera. I mean, how, how how fucked is your life, and how does so many things go wrong that you are recorded having a public freakout on multiple occasions over different dumb yeah. shit? I couldn't tell you, man. Just some fucking... I wouldn't be surprised if she's in Florida. Just some actual fucking dumb shit. Like, these people are just really shameless and really dumb. It's wild. Absolutely wild. <laughs> he definitely seems like a Floridian. I'm oh, I'm yeah. personally a fan of I Am Legend. I know she oh, was intoxicated. Good. I know that she's she good. was inebriated, which some people may say brings her no, down. you can't she knock was not her for a, that. You can't a, knock her for yeah. that. But that's what yeah, makes Karen's great, because that none of them are in a state. Alcohol of is mind. what brings out your inner yeah. like wild instincts, you know. Like that's right. who Drunk she words is in her are, natural environment. Are sober thoughts, mm -hmm. and while she's licking a window pane like a, a an orangutan, <laughs> I was laughing. I was basically the guy in the video, like, oh, she might be the one. Like, <laughs> yeah. this is the greatest Karen I've ever seen. She's re she was very good. I would definitely say she'd take it if she'd do it one more time. I'd need to see it at least one more time to show me she's consistent. She has what it takes to make it in the big leagues up there with the Walmart girl, but right now, just that one, it's a great start. I think we I think need a sober a freak out from her too. You know, show, show, yeah. so show that she can do this. it. You know, while inebriated and not, you know, what just that no liquid courage. Enhancers. Yeah, she can do it without the liquid courage. She needs to show that. If she had broken the glass, drunk or not, oh. S plus, that would oh. have been the ultimate Karen experience. That would have been she like incredible. went face first through that glass and was just like ah. <laughs> Like breathing and spitting on people. Dude, I would pay to hear the reaction of the dudes that were in there filming her, not expecting her to bust through it all, and then for her to actually make it through. It'd be like the like the Velociraptor scene in Jurassic Park, where they're just. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, God, that would have been so fucking good. Hats off to the the architects of that building, though. With that glass, that glass was working overtime. Like, I she think was, it was a bar or something, so they probably expect yeah. some questionable behavior but that was probably a first for everybody it's yeah first I don't for think, me i don't think they planned for some kind of occurrence like that she fucking <laughs> rhino head charged that multiple times <laughs> okay so to make sure she, everyone hold on I'm, to make sure everyone's on the same page so charlie you've been uploading several videos of just all these you know these viral karen mm -hmm. videos that have been going around and you had a tier list because you had a, a you know accrued quite a many videos reviewing these these psychotic women and these are just some of the s tier ones 
But one question I had is, do you do you search for the Karens every day, or do you let the Karens come to you? I well, I still I still search. I can't help myself. Like you, but yeah, a lot you, of you just wake up every day and you're like, quick Karen search. Just hop online, look for the latest. Karen yeah, is there like r slash Karens or something? Is it like? There is, but that's that's some pussy shit. I just go for like the more. <laughs> they don't have as good of a collection as he does. All right. Yeah, they they don't have like this you know Alexandria's library worth of Karen information here. I just. <laughs> I just very simply search Karen and then I just see what comes up just on Reddit or Google. It's just so easy because it's so common right now. And like everyone that's not even on the internet is still is calling these people Karens. My fucking parents call these kind of dumb women Karens. Like it's, it's I love that in huge. I love that in some of the Karen videos you have the camera person yeah. calling the Karen Karen, calling. which is great. Yep. Oh yeah. It's like the new world star. And, it's like and, Karen. And that psychotic yeah. boat one, the, the 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 chick by the boat that she was freaking out, she, I think she even said something like, I am not a Karen or something like that. Yeah, like she, she did. She's she aware did. of the Karens and still behaved like one. That's insane. That whole family. It's nice though that the that this has become such an accepted nomenclature because it makes it very easy to find. Mm -hmm. It's a whole category in and of itself that really just easy to just find if you want to look for it or even if you're not looking for it just it's just huge on twitter or everywhere so are these twitter kind of fucking are these sucks, videos but. generally classified as like they have karen in the title or, or sometimes you yep. have to really dig for them nope they, every single time they have karen in the title <laughs> every <laughs> single time that, <laughs> that's how you get views you got to know what people are searching for yeah i mean i don't even know what else you'd call it homeless meth addict woman in walmart <laughs> talks about the just brethren type florida woman well, that's another one, yeah. Florida woman. It makes me sad that, like, you know, we work inside so much and I don't have to go out for anything. You know, I don't encounter these people in my day-to-day -day job and I don't, you know, like, Kelly, like, my girlfriend, she goes to the grocery store. I don't go. I My chance of witnessing this in real life is just so low and it's kind of depressing to think about, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about that the other day, too, because I'd really like to see one in person. I would person. love I to see one in person. Incredible. Holy yeah. shit. I it, honestly like I do feel bad sometimes for some of these workers that have to deal with these like Karen's but at the same mm -hmm. time like that's got to be the most fun and exciting shit for a lot of them. Like I mean yeah, it sucks in the moment absolutely. for sure. For my retail experience having customers that were crazy. Yeah, but, damn, but, but the that crazy fucking though. Worth it. But that crazy? Well, like that's another level. I had level somebody try to return mulch. I told you that. They didn't freak <laughs> out on me. I used to work at Office Depot, Charlie, and I had okay. I would, we would sell printer ink a lot. And it was very Frequently stolen because of the price and how small it is makes for a good combination to up it in a pocket well, This woman stole ink brought it back to return it and I checked the product and it was fucking garden mulch from out front of the store That's what she put back in <laughs> the package. I packaging. shit you not So I mean I this the stories are worth it But I, I mean a Karen like that like the target Karen where she's like throwing masks on the ground that I, I couldn't deal with That's that's yeah, cuz that's work for you But like if it's just someone freaking out like that's, that's hilarious you just laugh at them. Yeah but there is some actual destructive ones like that target Karen. That's some pretty degenerate shit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, she was legit nuts. Like yeah. she works for QAnon. She's part of the White House. Like you're arresting oh, me yeah, because Jesus. I'm a Jewish woman. Like, is this the same one that had like 13 degrees or whatever? No, no that was a Canadian woman. Mm. This is a Arizona. See, woman, I don't know I if I want to battle someone you know that well versed intellectually, like an IQ that high. I'd be bested for sure. But part of me does want you know. I think it would be fun to be in one of these altercations because I, I did security like that was like the job I, I worked security at an assembly plant where essentially I had to like monitor employees coming in make sure people weren't coming in that weren't supposed to so they don't go in and steal shit or fucking shoot up the place or whatever the fuck they would do I had to make sure that everybody coming in was supposed to be there and then people leaving weren't like leaving when they weren't supposed to like you know not on their break or whatever or taking shit out with them like in their lunchbox and you know, like that fucking Charlie Cash Charlie Johnny Cash song of like one piece at a time or whatever was that Johnny Cash you know what song I'm talking about where he's, he literally like, the song is, he takes one piece from the assembly line of the vehicle they're making at the assembly plant out in his uh, lunchbox every day, and eventually he has all the pieces and he makes the car for himself and he stole it all for free. Like literally people doing shit like that, they're like stealing parts to sell it, and sadly nothing really ever that, that exciting ever happened. We had one guy who... He would sneak out on his lunch break. I confronted him about it. I'm like, dude, you're supposed to clock out. And then he like took his like little card that they're supposed to clock out with one time. And he did it. He faked it. <laughs> and then he just kept going. I was Why? like, <laughs> I was like, I know what you did, but what? <laughs> you know what? You put in the, I was like, you put in the effort. Like, sure. <laughs> we, we both made eye contact and he knew, I knew. He just kept going. I was like, all right. <laughs> 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 like, he, Might as well. Yeah. He's like, 
did the most half-assed, like, upside-down attempt at, like, swiping his card through to, like, clock out. Because what they would do is, like, the shifts would interchange. So as they were getting here, another shift would be leaving just a few minutes later. So they would have to park way back in the back of this giant-ass parking lot. And then on one of their first breaks, they would go out and move their car just to park it up front. That's all they were doing. So I understand that, but they're not supposed to leave on that certain break or whatever. And yeah, this guy thought he he had bested me. He was very clever with his little upside down card Old swipe. System. Yeah, yeah. But sadly, no, no Karens. Nothing that exciting happened. Disappointing. That's yeah, probably for the best. Especially back then, they wouldn't have been fun Karens like they are now. That's true. And yeah, and it wouldn't have been as you know instant to just pull out the phone and just start filming. Yeah, that's another big thing. That's something I've wondered. Has this always been happening? Just we didn't know about it, it until recently. It definitely has to have filming. always been happening. There's no way. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it, it probably has. But I imagine it's just escalated now. Like tearing masks down probably didn't happen before. But I imagine just like the general freakout shit has. Yeah, I don't I'm sure know. once like the access to the internet where people could just fill their brains with whatever ideas and get the confirmation that they want escalated this. But I'm sure there's still people in the 30s freaking the fuck out. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I, I guess that's that a nice thing, it. though. It's okay. nice that now we just film everything. Yeah, I mean, that's truly cool. one of the best parts of being alive. And, you know, this time that we're alive is just we can captivate all these psychos freaking out. It's great. You know, we get to see it. Yeah. We would never experience this shit otherwise, which is, you know, it's great. Um, I love it. I'm a huge fan. Yeah. Another thing that people capture on film a lot to make a little segue here, UFOs. Now, Charlie, Ooh. I know you, you're not like super, I, I saw you, you know, your video on the, like the Wayfair conspiracy. I agree. Total bullshit. But are there any conspiracies you do buy into and what are your thoughts on UFOs? All right. So for, consp I don't know what conspiracies I really believe. I love conspiracies. I look them up all the time. I like to research, especially the crazy, stupid fucking ones like the Wayfair and shit like that. I, I love Anthony, that. Anthony, are you I familiar with that one? Okay. Yeah. Just making sure. Yeah. I find all that very fascinating. My dad is the biggest <laughs> believer in ancient aliens. He's like, Charlie, these aliens have built these fucking pyramids, and I know it, and you're going to see. Oh, you're going to see. So I'm on the cutting edge when it comes to, like, alien stuff because my dad's always on, like, the front line. Like, well, I got some alien shit for you, Charlie. Has your, <laughs> yeah, has you your dad ever you seen a UFO or, you know, had any, you know, close encounters? My dad... <laughs> my dad uses an experience him and I shared when I was a kid. We were on a lake. And uh, there was this bright light in the sky and we both looked at it and then we looked at each other and we looked up again and it was gone. And my dad's like, Charlie, he sits me down. That was a UFO. <laughs> this was and then was like, or he's just reassuring like now? Like, no, like that was then. He's like, Charlie, what you've just seen is a UFO. <laughs> that was I an fucking alien told spacecraft you. without a doubt. <laughs> yeah. And, and I was like, I probably wasn't. I don't know what it was. I mean, it could have just been like a fucking sun flare or some shit. I don't really know. Piccolo doing a solar flare. I couldn't tell <laughs> Didn't have didn't have to be a UFO. There was plenty of other options it could have been. But now every time I bring it up, he's like, Charlie, you're going to make me tell you again. We saw a UFO. You're convincing yourself it's not real, but it was a UFO. Charlie, they're real. So you, you, you you're not at buying me. into the UFOs? You don't believe they're real? Oh, I never said that. Oh, I okay. just said hey, I think I've seen <laughs> He doesn't believe that one that was one, real. <laughs> yeah. Total bullshit. However. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think... I think the UFO shit, like whether you're talking about, they have off-world vehicles. Yeah, that was acquired. exactly what I was going to reference. Was like the the some astrophysicist who was like a former consultant or whatever for like the UFO program. He told the time, like the New York Times or LA Times, one of the two, that he gave a classified briefing to the Defense Department agency regarding off-world vehicles not made on this Earth. Yeah, and then there was. I think that shit's very fascinating. I don't know if I like believe that because I mean. It could just be an outright lie like there's no way to prove it i don't think they're gonna come out and be like yeah it's true yeah no, have you heard of like real. the bob lazar shit like bob lazar the guy who claims that like he worked for like the government and like was literally like he worked at a base south of area 51 like another hangar where him and the partner there were tasked with like working on an alien spacecraft and basically like reverse engineering it's like propulsion system was he the guy that uh, shared a screenshot of one of the control panels? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I know. I definitely saw him like he did like a rough sketch of an image on like Twitter. It looks like a nine year old drew a UFO <laughs> like, but at oh, the same God. time, like the dude seems like a smart guy. Like there's a legit article too. like back in the day, apparently like back in the eighties or whatever. He like he he fastened a fucking jet engine to like his Honda and drove it like to work every day like he had a honda that was capable of doing like 200 miles an hour that he actually strapped a fucking jet engine to and like it's an actual thing like it was an article in a newspaper 
actually worked. The guy knew about like jet engines and shit. Like he was a smart guy. Look it up. Just can't imagine yeah, he I'm would say that, that stuff publicly Look up without Bob Lazar being assassinated jet, jet sometime. Powered Honda. Yeah. I I feel like if someone really did work on it and was starting to just spill it all, I really do feel like they'd just be killed. Yeah, right? that's what Absolutely. I don't understand. So basically, he claims that like while he was there, he worked on like this spacecraft, and inside the spacecraft there was like this ball, the size of like a basketball, like this sphere. And that sphere, he claims, was a gravitational reactor that, when turned on, would cr would produce a gravitational field. And, like, the guy he was working with who had been working there before he did, and apparently the guy... So, this is Bob. Bob had a partner. I don't remember his name. Call him, like, Steve or whatever. Steve was working with another guy before Bob showed up. But apparently the other guy Steve was working with got fucking killed in some sort of accident there. That's what Bob was told. So, Bob starts going there. Steve's like, yeah, we're working on this fucking thing. He's like, try and touch it. And Bob, like, tries to touch it. And the thing, like, won't let him get close to it. Just pushes him away, like, you know, like, two fucking magnets or whatever. And and so it's it produces a gravitational field, and that's what he was trying to figure out how it worked. Is he still alive? Have they killed him yet? Who, Bob Lazar? He did this, was a, he did this like, for someone made a documentary about him, and then he was on Joe Rogan's podcast, like, a year and a half ago or whatever, and literally just went on for, like, two hours about this shit. And honestly, the podcast was way better than the documentary, because he actually just sat there and said everything, rather than some bullshit, like, guy trying to make it all, like, filmy and artsy and shit but I mean, obviously i'm skeptical but well of course obviously like how does he how, yeah how does he get away with that shit how is he not murdered how, how can you just like like fuck, we'll get we'll get sued if we break an nda on a new video game coming out this guy <laughs> this guy gets to go on a podcast for two hours and spout off about alien technology yeah yeah that's yeah that's uh i looked it up so this is pretty fucking interesting huh wouldn't would you look at the, would you look up the Honda or did you look up Bob Lazar in general? Well, I looked at the Honda first, I mean, but looking you at Bob to him Lazar speak, He's a pretty like intelligent guy. He doesn't come off as like crazy or anything, and he seems very genuine. Well, neither did Ted Bundy. <laughs> you know, fair. <laughs> fair. <laughs> well spoken. However, Didn't come off as a crazy. There are some UFO guys who are quite crazy. And Anthony, I don't remember if I showed you. Do you remember me showing you that fucking shitty ass <laughs> Netflix documentary? So I was cruising. Like, I was like perusing through Netflix one time. <laughs> And I don't know about you, but when I get on Netflix, I am just so overwhelmed. And I just like, I scroll through that shit for literally like an hour before I decide I want to watch something. That's how I watch Netflix. I'm just, just, just scrolling. Yeah, I just watch like the little one minute trailer. I'm like, eh, that's cool. And then I on to the next thing. I'll do that for like 30 <laughs> minutes. Well, eventually I got so deep in this shit that I stumbled across a documentary. I don't know if it's on Netflix anymore called The Curse of the Man Who Sees UFOs. And I watched, oh, the, that, I watched that one minute. Have you seen this? No, you I just sounds great. have to fucking watch it. Within, like, the first, like, little trailer thing, I was hooked. I had to click on it. Literally, the very beginning is this dude. He's, like, a crazy, eccentric-looking dude. He's got this little, disgusting-looking dog. He's got, like, crazy white hair. He looks like Marty from Back to the Future if Marty gained, like, 200 pounds and went senile. But he, like, he's bringing this camera guy. He's like, yeah, so I saw it over here. He's like, they're walking on to a public golf course. He's like, I saw an orb. I saw a red orb right up there. And then it, it came down and it went over here. And he's like running through this course while people are playing. He's just sprinting through this golf course. And then he goes, he's like, yeah. And then I come back by this tree and the orb came over. And it started making this noise and pulsating. And instantly I just had to shit. So I just pulled my pants down and he shit on the golf course. He said this red alien orb thing came down and made him shit himself and just literally the whole documentary is like an hour and a half following this guy he has like mountains of vhs tapes in his house from camcorders of him recording every little strange light he sees outside of his house he has like he has like audio that he like tries to decipher he plays it like backwards forwards stretched out trying to like decipher that the aliens are talking to him and shit and it's literally just one guy who is Kind of gone slightly insane over UFOs, and it, it's fascinating stuff. It's like that actual stories. Amazing. Cool too. Like he talks about like his adventures in like the film industry and music, and then like his family totally like stole all of his money and fucked him over. And it's understandable why he's a little crazy in the head. But it's just it's so it's shot like a serious documentary, even though the guy is clearly bonkers. That sounds amazing. It is. I highly recommend you watch. It gets a little slow in the last half, but God, that first 15 minutes is just so good. It's so good as this guy just walks you through every, like, literally every UFO encounter he's ever had. And he has names for them. <laughs> I just remember, yeah, he has names for them. And, like, you, he brings up his own footage. And, like, 
all these tapes are him just randomly pointing at his light in the sky. He's like, look at that fucking thing. Like, he's just, I don't know. It's so hard to explain. You have to just experience it. It's its insanity, but I love it. That sounds like something I'd really like. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping UFOs are real. And, you know, we, we get some hard evidence here soon about some aliens. That'd be so nice. That'd be pretty dope. That'd be so nice. We'd probably be fucked, but it'd be, it'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, they wouldn't. Uh, they'd probably leave us alone, right? Like, what the fuck would they get from exterminating us? We're going to do that ourselves, it seems like, with these fucking Karens at this point. Well, <laughs> yeah, well the, 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 the thing is, people think, they just, you know, they're just going to take, like, all of our resources or whatever. They're just going to, like, I don't know, have some machine that just sucks up all the good stuff off our planet and we'd just die, you know? <laughs> like there's much left. Like, the, the thought is, like, you know, picture, like, us going into, like, a forest, right? We're just chopping down all the fucking trees. We don't give a shit about the animals in there. They all die. They lose their homes and shit. And people don't, you know, like... Us humans don't care. We have wood now. Like, these aliens are just like, oh, we come to the planet. They just take our shit and they don't care about us. That's kind of... That'd be such a shame. <laughs> yeah. That's I'm just trying to imagine process, what they though. would need from us that they don't already have if they're able to travel to us and see us if we have what? no idea they're even How there. fucked up would it be if they needed our electricity? Like, they traveled this far <laughs> all off just, like, analog power, <laughs> like, steam planet, engine. Like, a fucking Tesla supercharger station? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, plug yeah. in, suck up our whole planet dry, and then on to the next one? I mean, that could be it, dude. That, or maybe it's our star, yeah. dude. They're coming for the sun. Ooh, that's a pretty powerful thing. Yeah, yeah it's like the that's only probably cool it. thing we that have. That would make more sense. They're trying to travel through the galaxy, and they have to make pit stops at the gas station that is our sun. Yeah. Damn, that'd be fucking intense. I don't know, aliens are cool. I don't want to fuck with that. Aliens gotta exist, right? They have to. It's just statistically, like, impossible that they don't. That we are the is only ones. Like this, the, yeah, I mean, the sheer numbers involved for us to be literally the only, like, life out there is, like, mind-blowing. It's literally, like, one in a one in quadrillion. Like, it's insane. I just don't believe it. There's a paradox. I don't remember. I don't think it's the Fermi paradox. I was trying to remember it the other day. There's one of them that says that we could be the only ones in the universe because maybe the universe just recently became inhabitable and we were the first ones, which I think is bullshit. Like, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah, true. There's no, there's just no way. Yeah, I just don't see how. Like, there's so much shit out there we don't even know about or understand. How can this be the first and only place that life is possible? Yeah. We're getting pretty deep in the wood, in, in the fucking weeds here, but. <laughs> Existential. Now. I know. A sweet segue here, you ready? <laughs> we actually have been in the presence of aliens for quite some time, and Charlie is quite familiar with them. His name is Vasily Kamaski. Woo! <laughs> that is a nice segue. Yeah, well, How do you feel about the god hand himself? Yeah, he's not an alien. That man's just an actual fucking deity. Yeah, <laughs> that guy's crazy. That guy's... For those that don't know, he's a professional Russian slapper. He's got a slap <laughs> that could split a mountain. Professional slapper. It's yeah, legit. Yeah, no. It, it, it's what he is. Mm -hmm. He's also a farmer, but who the fuck cares? That's obsolete. He has to be a farmer. Future. He takes a, a full fucking herd of cattle to feed that man. <laughs> He's a I, big boy. I actually have like legitimate slap questions for you. Like, yeah, hit me. Like, obviously, Vasily has been defeated on the Russian circuit a few times. How mm -hmm. do you think he would compete on like a global scale? Because I've seen you cover some American amateur fights. I think there was one in like Middle Eastern country, maybe India or something that you covered. I think there was a different uh, one. I don't. I, I know which one you're talking about. I don't know where it was though. But it wasn't think, American. I don't think, think it was Russia. You think Kamaski stands amongst the greats from other regions? Like if there was an Olympic slapping <laughs> event, you think Vasily comes on top? I think so, man. That guy has more experience than anybody else. Most people do one slapping tournament, and get their shit rocked, and be like, "Yeah, I think I'm just done." Bro, I've just seen like, like clips of that of yeah. like people's just fucking eyes turning purple and shit. It's like, yeah. fuck that, dude. You literally about slap that dude's eyes out of his socket. One of the matches Vasily lost sent him into a small coma. <laughs> dude, holy yeah. shit! You know, remember like old Kimbo slice fights, like just backyard oh. brawls. That's what. That's like Vasily of the slap. Like he's the Kimbo slice of the slap world. Yeah, it's he unbelievable. Really is. I really think if there was like an Olympics, like you said, he'd do extremely well. No matter, like I'm sure there's definitely bigger, stronger guys, like a hundred percent. But no one has like the experience getting slapped as many times as he does because he's slapping it himself. His technique is good. That guy yeah. could probably knock out a cattle on his farm. True, true. Yeah, his technique is really good now. Like you can see the progression from the first slapping tournament to the most recent one. He's got like an actual technique behind it. Can you walk us through that, like proper slapping technique? 
Yeah. Fuck, I, I have no idea. I'd never get my really? I'd never be in a slapping tournament. Absolutely not. Just from not. watching though, you can't kind of like they don't I can have tell any you the analysis most effect- video. Like who's the Joe Rogan of slap fighting who just really gets in there and breaks it down, you know? Like is that an actual like do they have commentators? They have uh, the Slap Fight Championship American one has a commentator, but I don't think he breaks it down. He's just like, hey, it's round 30. <laughs> Somehow they're still alive. the fuck out of them. That's literally Good a Lord. question I have for you, Charlie, Oops. which is, does the American circuit stand a chance? Would you ever consider being a commentator or doing an event to bring what? attention to it? As long as I don't have the liability, I'd, I'd love to. Dude, I think that'd the, be great. The YouTuber you boxing getting slapped? matches? Like, they're inviting you to commentate. Like, we need oh, this guy. Yeah. Instead of a oh, YouTuber boxing yeah. match, Charlie, you need to host a YouTuber slap is it sl- just slap fighting? Yeah. yeah, just slapping. Slapping contest, dude. I would participate. You say that now, dude. but man, those slaps look like they. Not fucking against those bones. people, against other YouTubers. Oh, if someone oh, like Leon okay. pops up here. I'm not going to slap Leon Lush, and I'm not going to let that's him fair. slap me. That's against YouTubers. Yeah, they like don't have like weight scrawny. classes in that shit. They don't, right? I've seen some big no. motherfuckers slap the shit out of some scrawny little dudes. There's no weight classes. That shit is a free. Well, I think there is in the American circuit, but in Russia, it is I mean, you a gotta free. Have a, you gotta have a barred. fat head for that, right? Like, mm-hmm. I've seen some skinny dudes. Like, what was it? The facility took on that guy that had like the demon eyes and was tattooed all over. He yeah, wasn't yeah. very big. He wasn't, but he still got his shit kicked in. He didn't pass out and he didn't like die. So he that took was a, a couple good ones. Has anybody yeah. died? Oh, he was totally from, inebriated from slap boxing, slap fighting. Not that they've reported on. I'm sure they have. I, no, like, I'm fucking like, oh, sure they I'm have. Get, <laughs> get oh, just cut that from the feed. <laughs> yeah, just give that really body to his family. No, I'm sure there's been a couple people who've... Like, imagine the CTE from that sport. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You think football's bad. I mean, you're yeah, literally that one's bashing nuts. someone's brain rattling around in their skull. That's like, you gotta have some fat on your head, dude. Undefended too. You're not allowed to defend in any way. So, so just, just taking absolute it. Absolute insanity to me. Yeah. But you know, I'm hey, slap the fuck out of somebody now. <laughs> <laughs> it would be just to give it all to, it I got. It'd be fun to slap the shit out of someone, but then just to know you have to receive it back. I wonder. Unless if you knock fair, them out. An advantage? Unless you There's got to be an advantage. Well, maybe not. Like, what do you? Okay, here I'll I'll I'll, I'll ask. What do you think is it, more of an advantage? Slapping first or slapping second? Because if you slap first, it's, you haven't gotten hit, you're not rattled. But if you slap second, you're probably pretty fucking pissed at the guy who just slapped you. I think going first is always going to be best when it comes to slapping. Because there is that chance you just get a one slap knockout and then you're not so taking any damage. So how do they damage. determine that in this sport then? <laughs> they fall <What> over. <laughs> yeah, no, they actually get knocked out. No, but I mean, out, how like, do they determine they... who goes first? They just fucking flip a coin? Oh, oh, I think so. I actually think so. Yeah. What a fucking coin toss 50, that 50 one chance. is. Yeah. yeah. Getting your head swiveled around like fucking exorcist. <laughs> oh, no. That's gotta be the shit. You flip that coin. Fuck. <laughs> like, dude. That's brutal. It is, man. That sport is actually super intense. I think the biggest thing you can do for yourself in that sport is grow a beard. Like, if you have, like, hopes of being a professional slapper, grow a fucking beard as quickly as possible to help cushion a little bit. I feel like that's yeah, not I a think, whole lot of Like, cushion. the hand might... Slap yeah. or like, especially if you like grease your beard up a little bit, like put beard yeah. oil before the match. Uh-huh. It's like it's like putting Vaseline on in a boxing match. It's like they can't get any traction. Yeah. yeah if you have a baby face, you're just doomed, man. Or, or if doomed. you have like stubble, that's just gonna act like that's just gonna cause friction. That's just sandpaper. They're gonna really knock your fucking head around. You know. Get some True. Yeah. You definitely off. need yeah. to like go deep. It's gotta be full beard or bust, I guess. Yeah. Absolutely. All or nothing. How did you stumble upon <laughs> this slap fighting shit? Someone rec- it was during a stream. Someone was like, "Charlie, type in slap." I was like, That's a, <laughs> such, someone banned that fucking guy. What a dumb suggestion! And l- long I was like, behold, whatever. You stumbled across a whole new world. Yeah, that was an eye opener. Back then, it was it was Generation Iron. I think put it on. It was like a little sideshow they were doing for a bodybuilder competition, just for like a hundred bucks. And then Vasily showed up and absolutely blasted <laughs> some like volleyball coach. And I was like, wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> So I mean, so oh is that God. generally like that with those YouTube or those Twitch streams where you just watch videos, like you just take suggestions from chat? They just yeah. kind of lead I mean, you not down every a rabbit Twitch. hole. Yeah, not every stream is a YouTube one though. But when we do yeah. YouTube night, I'll just like take stupid fucking suggestions from the chat. Obviously, not all of them because a lot of them are just like bad memes, and I don't really like memes in the first place. So yeah, but I'll take the ones that are just, hey Charlie, try this thing and see what comes up. I was like, yeah, that sounds good. I wanna, is that how you stumbled across Forged and Fire and Life PD and all that? Or is that just yeah. from your own? No, actually, both of those came from the Twitch chat. I didn't even know about Live PD until someone recommended it. 
Because I didn't really like cops. I didn't think cops was that fun, but Live PD was incredible. Live PD is pretty oh, solid. Different beast. <laughs> Live PD is <laughs> yeah. pretty solid. Yeah, I want to do. I want to do some streams like that, but I don't know because so I stream exclusively on YouTube, so I don't know if. Mm -hmm. I don't want to like have copyright issues or anything like watching some like live PD episodes or anything. I just don't know if that'd be a problem, yeah. but there's definitely some rabbit holes down YouTube that I'm like, man, it would be so much more fun to like watch this with people on stream. Yeah. And joke around with the chat about it. That's the fun of it. Yeah. We've managed to upload live PD and forge and fire and all these shows. How have you gotten around copyright with that? Is it just because of fair use? Yeah. Well, just because it's only little clips and it's just mainly the clip is just jokes. I'm making not necessarily the clip. But it, a lot of those, even now, have been taken down from copyright blocks, which oh, you do know, they get hit? comes with the territory. Yeah, some of them, not all of them, yeah. but a good chunk of them. It, especially Live PD. Live PD, like, they actually contacted me saying, no, nah, this is fine, this is actually pretty cool. We watched this around the office, and I was like, oh, that's great. But now that Live PD is canceled, A&E themselves is going around, like, flagging it and copyright oh. blocking it. Which is a shame, but it is what it is. That's dumb. Kind of be expected, honestly, but... yeah. Especially in this day and age, especially like the whole like with Twitch too, with them getting the old DMCA thing recently, like does it affect your stream at all, or is that just with music? I think that's mainly just with like mainstream music. I haven't experienced that yet. Hopefully, won't ever. But I think it's just with like corrupt UMG and stuff like that. They've always been a pain in the ass for all of mm -hmm. us. Worse than yeah, Nintendo. Even... I don't know if you ever used to try to fuck with Nintendo oh, games dude. on your channel, but boy, oh I boy, they were not a fan yeah, of us. Why were they such a pain in the ass back then? They were so like. I think they're, they're good. They were they're... afraid of game sales. Like, they thought if they watched a, someone streaming a game or playing a game, that that would affect the audience's desire to purchase mm, it. No, it's actually the quite the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> like, they did eventually catch on, though, right? I mean, I don't feel like we have problems now. Yeah, we're but... fine now. We've been fine for a couple of years, but... Yeah. Like, even you still recently got hit on Mario Kart. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I quit playing. One, I would get hit by that shit all the time. I would have to, like, upload the video fucking... I would, I would have my editor, like, edit the video... And then I'll be like, all right, now, now you don't just edit a mirrored version because we're probably going to need that. <laughs> so I would upload the first version. It would get hit. I'm like, all right, mirror it. We would do that. And then we'd be like, all right, it's mirrored, but they still didn't like this one, like one minute segment. And so we'd have to like cut a race or something. Yeah, it was super annoying. I was like, I just want to upload me playing Mario Kart with my friends and not have to worry about copyright from this company who is about five years behind on this shit. Nintendo is the most out of touch company, I think, in the entire online spectrum. Like, they don't even understand the internet. Like, none of their games have good online. Yeah. Because they can't figure out, like, what the fuck online even means. It's terrible. They're so archaic. Yeah. Nintendo. You, you did, like, a, you hosted, like, a, a Smash tournament or something recently, yeah? Like, mm -hmm. isn't there issues, yeah. like, with online Smash shit? Oh, it's terrible. It's yeah. terrible. Yeah, it's really bad. Is it just, it's just laggy? It's just their servers are shit, or... They don't have server. It's peer to peer. Oh, really? You, I didn't you, know that. Yeah, when you pay for Nintendo Online, you're paying for peer to peer connection, and it's garbage. It's fucking terrible. And the game itself ships with like some crazy frame delay, and when you go online, it just exacerbates that problem. It's Nintendo just doesn't understand internet like at all. I'm I wouldn't be surprised if they don't even know what email is. They haven't even got to that <laughs> point. You always notice. Yeah, that. no, they were. <clears throat> They were always a pain in the ass for us. Yeah, I mean, they, yeah, they make rough. some cool-ass games, and they obviously do really fucking well with their consoles, aside from the Wii U, but, like, the Wii was, like, a massive success that no one really thought would happen. Literally every... I still have one laying around somewhere. Everybody has one of those fucking things laying around somewhere. They bought it and played Wii Sports three times, then quit. And then yeah, cool game, the though. Switch, super popular. I was super skeptical of the Switch when it first came out. I was like, this is dumb. They made another shitty console that's not going to have the same power as anything else. And I don't want to play a mobile. Like, I don't play mobile games, or not mobile games, but I don't play, like, on a Nintendo DS or anything. But, no, it's very popular. But, yeah, they can't it's, do online. It's good. For sure. You can't get them anywhere. They're out of stock. Really? Still? Like, with the all the Corona switches? shit? Yeah. Yeah, because the production, they're still being. Oh, the production. Thing, okay, it makes sense. Only way you can find them now is, like, black market. Got to find people selling them on Craigslist for 500 bucks a pop. Stupid. Like those fucking Bowflex dumbbells. I got I got scammed on some Bowflex dumbbells not too long ago. Well, not scammed. I willingly made the purchase, but I couldn't find them anywhere. And so I was like, I, I want these because I want to do some workouts at home. $1,000 for a $300 set of dumbbells. And I said, fuck it. I want them. <laughs> I need them. What? Yeah, I couldn't find Wait, them anywhere. Wait, finally came in. Yeah, he... How many dumbbells was it? They're adjustable ones. So, like, they're any weight. That's oh, why I was like, oh, I really oh. want them. Um, cause like, like, I ordered mine in March and they came in July. He ordered his direct for retail yeah. price, but he had to wait three months. 
my gyms opened up again before my dumbbells got here. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I want these like this week. Well, you know, <laughs> scammer Steve over here on Amazon, he's selling all the toilet paper and all the Bowflex dumbbells for a thousand dollars over <laughs> over retail price. God. Yeah, said to go for it though. I think that's hilarious. So eBay and Amazon will crack down on people reselling hand sanitizer and toilet paper, but don't give a shit about counterfeit items. Or That'd just, be hard to police, though, right? Because they'd have to go through like each and every claim. Yeah, it would certainly have to be harder, but I'm sure there's ways to get around the yeah. policing of their toilet paper stuff called paper towels. Or <laughs> True. That's <laughs> a anus, good idea. <laughs> anus cleansing paper. <laughs> yeah. The rectal reaper. Like, there's got to be something you can call it to get past sort of like these things here. True. All right, well, I think that's... That's probably about a wrap, honestly. It's been uh, it's been fun hanging out and chatting. I'm sure, we yeah, sure man, it was nice to talk to you again. on again sometime if there's you know some more conspiracy theories or something to talk about or more Karens happen. You know, you got to keep us up to date on all the Karens. Yeah, it was nice. I really appreciate you having me on. It was nice to talk to you again, Tyler. And it was nice to meet you, man. Big Jiggly Panda. Yeah, nice uh, to meet you I don't too, know man. if you want. I don't know if we're on a first name basis, Anthony. You can call me Anthony. I've been calling you Charlie all day. It's fine. Okay, cool. Well, it was this was a lot of fun. I really appreciate yeah, it. Hey, let the people know. Where to find you? When when are you usually Twitch streaming? When do you upload your videos? Where do you upload them? You got your own uh, podcast as well. Don't forget that. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. I was on it. that uh, like yeah. three years ago. I got to come back on again. Yeah. Sometime. You were like one of our first ones. That was like episode 19. We're up to like one, what, 192 well, now? We're only on oh, eight. Shit. We're only on eight. So <laughs> we've got a little ways gotta, to go. But Yeah, this is a it's a bright future yeah, on this I, podcast. I, I so it's a professional podcast. Back then, like, I was still like... Not, I don't know, was not as good at doing that sort of thing as I am now and not as, I don't know, I guess confident in myself, I guess. I have more of an understanding mm. of who I am and like what I'm doing on this YouTube shit, so. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I mean, both of you are welcome on the podcast for sure, obviously. We'll have to do That'd it. Fun. Yeah, well, again, thank you. Uh, yeah, for YouTube, it's just Penguin Z0 and Twitch is moist critical. I stream daily, but I don't have like a schedule. It's just any time of the day, but pretty much every day. Sometimes I miss it, but All right. mostly <laughs> every day. All right, awesome. Well, thanks for coming on once again, and uh, you know, look forward to chatting again sometime. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Dad.